now, here's your hosts, The League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. Hello and welcome to the All In Podcast. It, Worlds has started and we're going to be talking about the first few days. Uh, we already have some people making it to the quarterfinals and we already have some people eliminated. Uh, today is Monday, October 7th, so we just finished kind of like the first round of Worlds, I guess. Uh, and then there's going to be a break and then we're starting again on Thursday, which is in a few days from today. But um, how you doing, Kevin? How's life? Talk to me about what's been going on with you. Yeah, uh, I've been doing pretty well. I've stopped traveling nine times in three months, which was the last nice. three months. So <laughs> I'm enjoying just spending weekends here, uh, chilling. Uh, I got food with friends. Uh, he uh, he made food for all of us, and we just chatted until like 3 a.m. So I haven't done that since college. That was fun. Oh, nice. Yeah, um, food. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm doing well. Nice. Good. Yes, I'm doing well as well. So... Honestly, it's been crazy hot over in the Bay Area. There's like a heat wave for about like five days. So I've just been inside in for October. all the worlds. Yeah, I think it's the solar flares or something was going on. Uh, and it just, yeah, it just makes it hot. Uh, it's like a, happens every now and then, I guess. I don't know how often, but um, it was really hot. Literally, it started like last week, Thursday, I think. So like it was right when world started and i was like oh i'll just stay inside anyways and i just like woke up early um work from home and it was great uh mm -hmm. yeah so um let's not talk about worlds it's been awesome uh we we'll just start from the beginning okay so 100 thieves is eliminated i don't even know if we talked about that i don't even remember but we're going off of that right let's not forget that it's been rough for na um and then we have the first day of groups and then i think our swiss stage and I think it was pretty much went to chalk, right? Every It was like no upsets, really. Uh, and I think the worst part was Team Liquid and did not upset. Fnatic, um, they did, or not Fnatic. Um, FlyQuest, they did beat the team. Uh, this was Gam, I believe. Um, so that was good. Um, but I think it was a bit of a bummer. So let's talk about that TL versus LNG game first. We'll go down the timeline, okay? Um, so what you? So it wasn't great. I mean, it was close, which is cool. Um, but you know, Team Liquid, I think, starting off a bit cheeky. Yeah, um, I would say that it wasn't great, but it wasn't the most depressing thing. I'm gonna say like Copium, sure, but I think Liquid's macro was way better. I think they played the map really impressively, and it was like really, it was kind of inspiring to watch, like just a team play <coughs> at a systematically good level, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and so we'll talk about it a little bit more later, but this is against a team that's actually doing very well right now. So yeah. the fact that you could out macro, incredible. I think the frustrating part of the NA special here, which is uh, players that we know have international experience, including APA especially, and impact to a, slight, a lesser extent and maybe umpty, but like mostly the, the obvious one in this match was APA. Yeah. Just like couldn't push their buttons. And I'm like, this is your like... <laughs> Third international tournament. You've been on fire, and the stakes were much higher, uh, at least in, you know, yes, it wasn't Worlds, but you've been at Worlds. You've been at MSI and EWC. So, like, what, what are, how are you, how is this the time you choke, right? Yeah. Um, and it wasn't even like a small choke. It's like an egregious, like, you don't know how to do a Nico combo, even though you're yeah, good at Nico. You're like, bad. actually, Nico's one of your good characters. Nico, he's the Nico merchant back in the day. He knows all the crazy Nico mechanics too. It was a bit of a bummer to watch. Yeah. yeah. So I, I mean, it, it was reassuring that the hard things were done very well, but the not hard things they just kind of completely flopped. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's so true. It was a fumble right at the end. Um, I think APA the really bad one was he was playing Nico and he like kind of flashed into the wall. He had the perfect flank. LNG was perfect. so so screwed in the dragon area, uh, but he just flashed into the wall. He he started his Nico ulti way too early, um, and that was the big uh, miss. He had a couple other misses that were like he just really didn't get big ultis. Like I think he would land like some one mans or he kind of flash in. Everybody would like not even like be able to flash out or dash out. And I don't know, it's, uh, there needs to be a bit more like quickness with his hands, right? He just had to do his combos a bit quicker or just kind of land it in the right spot. But 
Um, yeah, it was it was throughout the entire game. Um, yeah, it was super close um, in terms of macro. Yeah, we were definitely winning in macro. I would say almost all of our positioning in dragons like areas, we had just so many winning si situations. But I I think there was a mix of like kind of everybody missing their skill shots on the team. It wasn't just APA2. Mm -hmm. uh, Umti, I think he had a really good early game. Like, I don't think he's going to get a lot of praise in this tournament um, because he just whiffs his skill shots so much. But <laughs> he had an insanely good early game, I thought. He was putting on so much pressure. Like, something Umti does is he just ganks you to ganks you. Like, he's not just there to only gank if he gets something out of it, but he's just pressuring you, being really annoying. He's just driving around and scarter through walls. Um, or, like, kind of annoying you and then driving away. Um, he actually did get hit by a bug where he tried to drive through a wall. He got stopped midway, and then he died. Yep. That kind of sucked. Um, but this is after missing tons and tons of Skarner ultis, if I'm being honest. Uh, he just could not land them. He landed some of them, but not enough. Not enough. Uh, and I think Corda J, you know, some bad ultis, some bad E's here and there. But um, they were always at the right place at the right time, it felt like, though. So... Um, story isn't too different when we go to the Weibo game. Honestly, very similar story we're going to talk about. Uh, we, we can talk about FlyQuest um, a little bit here. They did beat the lower seed, or the wildcard team, sorry. Um, it was pretty impressive. It was pretty solid. Um, let's let's keep talking about day one, though. I don't know if there's much to comment about the Fnatic, or the FlyQuest versus Gam game. Um, did you have anything you want to comment on that one? No, just very yeah. solid. They outclassed them. Yeah, pretty much. They had good macro, too. Uh, I think they did the lane swap. Um, I think they've been lane swapping almost all their games. Um, but yeah, other day one games were great. I think one of the surprising ones for me was um, actually T1 Top Esports. Um, T1 actually kind of looked good, even though they lost. And then you kind of saw that momentum kind of play up later on in the tournament. Um, so yeah, any thoughts on... Just talk about... That series or any other the series you kind of want to go through game one, game one or day yeah, one. Yeah. That series was impressive from top, but I would also say it was really discouraging from T1 for uh, for an opener. I mean, we'll talk about the other matches, but T1 was up like three, four, three k at least at some mm -hmm. point, three point something, and they were you know did a great lane swap. Top esports looked completely lost, like they didn't know what a lane swap was, and. They lost in basically every way possible <clears throat> across the map on tempo, on allocation, on just how to execute and respond. And then Static Shiv. Oh, yeah. Man. Oh, as yeah. ARAM a Static Shiv abuser. Yep. I was just like, I've been saying it. You've been saying it. We've all been saying it. This item is broken. Yeah, it's broken. Um, now, to be fair, in, in a real game on um, the Rift, it's not always broken, but in a Wombo comp like that, Really good. I think the unsung hero for that game was Tien. Uh, like Jackie did, you know, do an incredible amount of damage, but Tien set it up. The man did like four three man ults on Skarner. He just like <laughs> looked at the other comp and he was like, okay, you've got Nico, Rakan, Jax, and mostly Wukong all jumping in, right? There's a big wombo. What can I do to stop that? Play Skarner. And he did it yep. really well. Yeah, he's actually been playing all tournament at an incredibly good level i would say him individually even regardless of how bad his team is or good his team is in some of these games so i uh, this is the first group stage i've seen since 2019 where tian's like not a choker yeah because so uh far. so far so, so <laughs> far yeah because tian has been on two rosters that were really top tier from the lpl and not made it out of groups it was top esports and it was fpx um so you know the the fact that he's playing well in those groups Thank goodness, you know, because he has always been considered like MVP level uh, regionally, but he never shows up internationally and he has been playing well internationally. Um, you know, he played a decent uh, MSI, even though they got 3 0 by G2. It was that was bad, but um, he played a decent EWC, I thought, when they beat T1 or not T1, uh, Genji, and then mm -hmm. he's playing well now. So, yeah, hopefully T1 can TN can keep it going because I did think um, top esports is like eventual response to how they were going to play against the Wombo combo was exactly that. Like, Tien was positioning properly to counter-engage, to AoE CC them. Um, and also, it's just a big counter to these big engage AoE comps. Is you get a really tanky champion like Skarner, who has, like, priority on his E, right? Whatever you do, his E is going to CC you. Uh, and I don't think there's a lot of champions that do that in the game. So that's why he's OP. 
Um, so big, big for there. Um, yeah, let's talk about some other day one games. Um, I think G2 versus Pain, or PSG was a pretty fun one. We got the Yasuo Yon like brother combo. I think they were kind of styling on them. Uh, it's nice to see that G2 is probably like significant step above PSG that they can do that type of stuff. Um, because PSG is normally considered like a pretty good team, but maybe a bit weaker this tournament uh, than we're used to. Um, any other comments on day one? I think most of the games went to scratch, right? Most of them were pretty um, predictable. I would mention Weibo. Yeah. Weibo versus Genji, even though Genji won as expected. That was a Weibo lead for no, yeah. it was close. a lot of the game. Weibo was playing really well. I think Xiaohu made some micro mistakes on his uh, Lucian, which yep. was kind of surprising considering he's known for it. And I do think Breathe wasn't that good in general. Mm. But uh, in general, they had a good macro play. They were dominating the map for a long period of time. And then they kind of just... Shaohu flanked multiple times on Lucian. And I think yeah. it was very memorable for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, yeah. The Huni moments. Um, yeah, I I did actually like that game. I was a bit scared of that game, actually. I kind of didn't like that game. Because we were seeing a very heavy glimpse into... Uh, pre world patch meta where it was like Gen G is just playing like three nerf champions. They're playing Rumble, Maokai, and Smolder. Super late game giga scaling, like, you know, just ultimate Gen G Korean stereotype macro kind of comp. Uh, and then Weibo is countering it with double ADC and an Ivern, which is also just straight from uh, the previous meta, right? So. I was afraid that that was what, like, maybe the entire world's meta was going to be, because that's what Genji were doing. Luckily, that's not been the case. I think it's just, like, a flex spot that you can choose to go into, especially if you get Smolder. And then, what is the enemy team going to do? Are they going to try to outscale you with Ivern Shields, or are they going to try and jump on you with Nocturne or something? Uh, which we'll see Genji do later in the tournament. Um, but, yeah, I like the idea from Weibo to keep it close. Um, but if you're going to play the slow style, I think Gen G is unbeatable in that in that area, right? Like, they're just too good at that. So, I mean, it was a good try from the fourth seed from LPL. So, yeah. not bad. Um, yeah, let's move on to get day two. Um, I think top esports uh, versus Gen G and LNG versus BLG, like, like top of the table. Those were really hype series or games. Um, BLG kind of getting upset by LNG, right? The third seed. It is just a best of one, not a best of series, and BLG is like not a perfect team. They're gonna drop games, but uh, it didn't really wasn't that close. Um, first thing I'm gonna comment on the BLG side of the things is they don't seem like they have a good understanding of the meta. Like they were first picking Oriana, and then their their next game uh, and the next day they'll talk about against D1. They first pick Ari, and people aren't really doing this. I think people are first picking like. A lot different champions, even though those champions are good. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't feel like BLG's meta rate read is quite up there, and LG did kind of definitively upset them. Uh, what are your thoughts on this game? Yeah, it's sort of an upset. They still went 3 2, if I remember correctly, in playoffs. So, like, it's not like this isn't a close matchup. Yeah. Um, but I would say that. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think BLG had a great read. Yone is getting through that way was very odd to me. Like, uh, you were kind of dancing around the issue. I, I just think it's pretty egregious to yeah, it's terrible, leave yeah. it up. Like, yeah, you might not play it, which is like something Knight is very good at the characters he's good at. Yeah. And he doesn't play certain characters as much, right, at the same level. So I get it. Your pile is different. That doesn't mean you let it through. Like, mm -hmm. you can't just sit me down and be like, okay, you know, we. it's not like they don't know what the other team is. Or what they can do. So if you sit down and you tell me, yeah, I think we need to ban Kindred. Yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. Let's or, ban Kindred in 2024. Like, yeah, yeah. Weiwei plays it for sure, but. Yeah. Bad is it really going to dominate as much as Scout on Yone? Like, yeah. No, it's, 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 that's a very good point. They also missed a ban. I, like, forgot that that happened. They missed a ban in the second phase. Uh, which, you know, you could say it's intentional or not. It's almost always unintentional, right? There's no, like... Where, where's the advantage, right? Yeah, yeah. You're like, we don't need this to beat you, I guess. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's so yeah, weird. Mental uh. mental edge. Uh, but Scout's Yone was, like, feared in the LPL before this uh, this meta, right? Before the world's meta. He's insane on the champion. Um, I think Yone in general, there are some teams that, like, I think they just didn't understand how broken it was going mm -hmm. to be. Um... But I think for BLG's case, 
it's early on the tournament still kind of but like they should have known this was not okay to leave out uh leave through cuz i don't i don't think it took like for a while till people were realizing that you just can't let it through no matter what and if you don't play if you're not going to first pick it you can't let it through um that developed later on into the tournament much more heavily but people were letting it through on day 1 and day 2 and they were just losing against it so blg one of the first to do it off from blue side <laughs> um yeah, I think it was pretty rough. But LNG played a great game. Um, LNG is also one of our teams that made it through. I think very deserved for them. Uh, they beat T1, uh, you know, or TL, some chokes there from us to let them through. But they definitely beat BLG, definitely beat Danwon, and now they're through. Um, Scout had an interview where he said he kind of wished that they were still playing in there because going out going out 3-0 means you get le less practice. Um so you wanted actually kind of more, some more stage time. What do you think about that? I mean, it's kind of interesting, right? Um, yeah, I was. I, the thought crossed my mind that we've been talking for a long time. We've been saying, and you know, the dive mentions this sometimes on up, but we've been saying for a very long time, lower bracket is a buff. Like we joked about it in twenty when was it introduced? Twenty twenty or something? Twenty ninety? Whenever lower yeah. bracket was introduced, maybe twenty twenty one. We were joking like, oh, you know, lower bracket buff, or you know, before that it was the gauntlet buff. Yeah. Well, like, yeah, you know, more games, haha. Maybe it's an advantage. And then the more it happened, we're like, wait, T9 just keeps doing well, or some X team keeps doing really well from down there. Yeah. I think it actually is a buff. And I think I'll add more nuance to it. It matters who's on the team. Yeah. If it's a bunch of veterans and and they're on the right meta, like they're just doing well on it, it's actually better to hide picks, in my opinion. You don't need to play. Your veterans know what to do. That's fine. If you have a few rookies, which is more and more super teams or the best teams have a mix of rookie and veteranship. Yeah. Then, I mean, more games to, to screw around with as long as you win. It builds confidence. It helps you understand, did I misread how good Ari or Oriana is? Yeah. Did I over-index or under-index? And yes, the other team can watch it, but they can't get that muscle memory rep as they're sitting in the upper bracket, right? Yeah. So, all I was to say is, I'm not telling us to end, but I think Liquid's winning worlds. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay, we're getting all the rips. That's why we went down there. Um, yeah, that's. I mean, that's the copium that we're going to talk about eventually. But uh, for for Scout's sake and LNG skate uh, stake, I I definitely think that they they want to more games. Um, they got some easier opponents, right? I think the hard one they beat was BLG, but they're on a bad meta read. They didn't get to face anybody like Genji or Hanwha Life or. Uh, even top esports, right? Kind of see how that matchup feels on on the world's patch, um, and those are going to be the main competitions if LG wants to win this title. Uh, so they're not going to get any of that experience, right? I think something that's super valuable for both Genji and Hanwha Life is they got to play and learn from each other on a, a match point, and they're likely to meet each other in the finals, right? They're one of the two favorites for this tournament. They're going to be on opposite side of brackets, assuming Hanwha Life gets out. Uh, on like Thursday or Friday again when they play FlyQuest Rip, um, but like they're gonna be on opposite sides of the brackets. So um, yeah, that's gonna be interesting for LNG. They're they're gonna get an easier opponent in the quarterfinals, but um, on I mean, we Scouts done it before, right? Uh, we don't know what LNG's ceiling really is. Uh, a lot of like newish players, I think, for uh, Zika and Weiwei, they've only been to Worlds like twice now, so. Anything can happen. I don't know. Um, they're interesting. Maybe they could win Worlds. Uh, I'll add a little bit in. It is mm -hmm. also a scheduling issue from mm. uh, Riot. There's just no need. I love Worlds, and it's like over a month long, which is great for me, the viewer. But there really is no need for a tournament of this size. It doesn't even have a lower bracket to run this long. Yeah, um, okay, yeah. I love how many matches there are. I love all of it. I, I get to wake up, and I have like a great weekend every weekend. But from the point of view of the players, they're like playing for over a month in a tournament that only has a Swiss stage, a single Elim round of eight, and then a play in stage that half of them aren't playing in. Yeah. Like true. that's very cool for me. I'm just saying for the players, like you can go cold. It happens. You yeah. see players run out of steam. Yeah, I 100% I agree. People have complained about it. They're going to, I think Genji and LNG might have to wait like a whole two weeks before they play again on stage. Um, and yeah. oh yeah. yeah, exactly. Some may consider that an advantage, but I think a lot of people in this day and age really like to consider that a disadvantage. Um, I mean, just look at like the last few teams that have won worlds. It's uh, T1. They also went three one in the group stage, so they got a bit more time. Um, and then DRX went all the way from play-ins and they won. So 
uh, EDG had to play five game series all the way up to the title, right? Like it's just playing a ton of reps is so useful, I think, uh, for winning the title. And domestically, it plays out the same way. So very interesting. Uh, and then now we get to talk about the teams that are still in this tournament that are ramping up. Uh, let's go to like um, more to put it. Yeah, so <laughs> I think more uh, games in day two that were interesting. Genji versus or G two versus Hanma Life was a best of one that was really crazy. Um, super close of getting the upset. I don't think anybody would have expected G2 to actually beat Hanma Life, but the fact that they were that close, um, it sucks that they brought down the Yon win rate, but it was it was a fun uh, game. Any thoughts on G2 versus Hanma Life? Yeah, G2 showed a better game for maybe 80% of that game, in my opinion. I think yeah. they were doing so well on their map play. They were, you know... Uh, mostly they were doing well on map play. They were setting up the fights, setting up the objectives. We're about to get, you know, Infernal Soul. They got the first two drag, or no, the first two. They got two Infernals, right? They were so close. And I felt like their concentration slipped or they, mm, yeah. they, well, I mean, okay, there's that. I will start complaining a bit because I hate this character except when I'm playing it. <laughs> Dude, they got three Barons into Smolder. And I'm just sitting here like, they can't even close. They can't do anything. And then, like, no. it's not like the rest of the team is a super wave clear team. It's Jax, Sejuani, Ash, and Braum. There's yeah. no wave clear there amongst yeah. the four of them. And yet they still can't siege. Partially it's because their comp is a little bit shorter range. I'll, I'll give them that. <laughs> Partially, Smolder's disgusting. Absolutely yeah. disgusting. And Zeka played an amazing, but, like, it's disgusting. So I'm going to complain. I don't think there's a world where a good team with three Barons should not be able to close against no wave clear except for one character. Yeah. I am I I uh, definitely I mirror that sentiment. It was really annoying watching Smolder AoE wave clear with true damage and just stack and slowly get stronger and stronger. Way too safe. Um, I am going to say one thing that I'm going to permeate later uh, and like talk about more is that uh, drafting comps into these like new age super giga OP champions like Aurora and like Smolder um you need single target cc you need like a like an fu button you need vi pretty much or maokai <laughs> you, like, you really do it's they're too mobile they scale too well and they do so much aoe damage and it's like unless you instant pop them you jump on them immediately the entire time you're getting kited you're just taking so much damage and like they're healing off of you right aurora's healing off of you and smolder is uh fleet healing uh getting flies bloodthirster stuff like that um so yeah it's pretty op um sucks for g2 i do think they lost focus as well uh but they were getting out comped right it goes to a point where they have a braum and a smolder that's super late game that's like really fast and stuff with a dash and healing and like you just can't kill it um it's, it didn't die the entire game so it was pretty crazy um so close for g2 i think they're the real deal this tournament though i think they're really strong i just I, if they do show up against NA, F it, choke, you know, G2, just choke it, I don't care. But if they don't come up against NA, I'm, like, wishing G2 the best because they look so good this tournament. And they're really fun to watch. Um, other games that happen on day two, kind of, let's see. Oh, yeah, Team Liquid Weibo. I mean, we don't really have to talk about it. We, we don't have to talk about it that much. It was pretty sad. Um, we were insanely close to winning this game. Like, not insanely close, not as close as G2 Hanma Life, but it was, like, right there, right? We were ahead. We were strong for, like, the entire game, pretty much. Um, just mechanics, right? A couple mechanical chokes. What, what, do, you, what do you have to say about Weibo uh, Team Liquid? APA played a little better. There were some mechanical chokes still, but, like, as a whole, he was at least, like, conscious. And yeah. able to play his character. Yep. His syndrome was fine. And mm -hmm. I think Yon Core JJ had some good laning parts. They think they got a solo kill or a dual sorry, like a dueling kill mm -hmm. uh in lane, I think. The the, the, the highlight remember. or low light that I really want to point to is like impact just again. On the first match I, I highlighted APA because it was the obvious thing, but impact has not shown up. Yeah. Yeah. And he has not shown up at all. Like it's not even like Oh, you know, he's kind of quiet, right? It's more like he's a detriment. Yeah. And that's really sad considering he's been playing peak. He's like been playing some of the best league he's ever played in the last like half decade. So yeah. it's really concerning. But at the same time, my copium take, and I'll continue to carry this to the next series, is if he even shows up 80%, I don't even need, I'm not asking for 100. If he shows up 80% of what he did, we're going so far. We're, yeah. Like, we're actually <laughs> taking a team that went 3 0. Yeah. 
to the to the bottom of the line. WBG uh, Weibo also a good team so far. Also took him, and we had no top laner. Yeah. So like. Anyways, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. There's a lot of room for improvement for TL. A lot. Uh, even today's series, can we can talk about it. But uh, Impact versus Breathe. Breathe is one of the worst uh, Eastern <laughs> top laners rated, and we got solo killed by him. That sucks. That that was a rough one. Um, Breathe, I mean, he played well in this game, let's be honest. Um, but um, I think... Another issue here was like the inconsistency kind of of Yon and APA as carries in that in the crucial fights, their positioning is just not quite well enough. Their um, kind of like skill shots aren't just like well enough. And then just a little bit of unluckiness, just a little bit of cope where I do feel like um, the pitiful one was APA. He was trying to flash onto Xiaohu in the Baron pit very late in the game. Xiaohu is like, kind of in the top lane, entering um, into a bush near Baron, and APA is kind of zoning him. And he's kind of landing stuff, but um, Zhaohu just barely gets a shockwave off, and APA actually flashes it. He wants to flash it, but he's just still barely in range of it, and he gets clipped, and he gets pulled back. He dies, and then like Eon at the same time is kind of positioning very aggressively in the middle of people, and they just get wiped, and that is game over for TL. It's just... Kind of a very unfortunate way to lose the game uh, from such a strong state. I think APA was 6-1 and one at one point with a huge bounty on his head. Like, he was actually um, the guy to carry the game. And just gets clipped by Shockwave. That's it. Uh, ends ends that game for them. So, pretty unfortunate. Um, I do think, it's kind of funny, Light was playing so insanely well until he just ran it down. <laughs> Which is funny. <laughs> but uh, it doesn't matter because they still won. But like Light was like playing like, oh god, this guy is cracked. There's a reason why this guy made world finals last year. There's a reason why people are saying he's like one of the most underrated uh, AD carries of the tournament. He did int at the end, but I think whatever, it's fine. Everybody ends, well, they still won, right? He was sending people in uh, on the Callista, but very well played from him. Uh, let's move on. Um, FlyQuest versus Danwon, or D, yeah, Danwon, D plus Kia, whatever. Um, man, I really think FlyQuest, actually, the fact that they brought it back was kind of made me happy. Because they fell behind pretty badly in the lane swap. Uh, the no TP, Darius, Bwipo, like, I'm starting to just get annoyed with Bupo a little bit uh, at this tournament. Uh, we'll talk about one of those matches where it was ridiculous what we saw, what Bupo did. Um, but in this match, you know, I just think his champion pool decision was just a completely just short-sighted, like, dude, no, no duh, they're going to lane swap, right? Everybody's lane swapping these days. Um, but close game, they lost. Uh, any thoughts on D-plus versus FlyQuest? Yeah. Uh, agree with the Whipple point. How how are you sitting in a lane swap meta and picking Darius with Ghost? Like, what, what is going on? Uh, although, all to be said, I was, like, flaming him out loud, and then he's 0-3. I, they scrolls back to top. He solo kills Kingan, and I'm sitting there like, you're just kidding me. <laughs> like, yeah, actually, what am I looking at here? <laughs> this is so solo queue, it hurts. Yeah, um, so true. I'll give him credit on that. He does know the limits of his character. He just doesn't know. He thinks about it, I think, still too much in the box of, like, I practice 1v1s a lot or like whatever. Hmm. So, I mean, it's weird because you know this guy plays solo queue. So, like, I honestly don't know what's going through his head. Maybe he just doesn't think in scrims or champ select. I have um, a theory. Go I ahead. I want to hear it. Okay. Kingen is actually not very good this tournament. Okay. He won Worlds two years ago, but this tournament, he, and honestly, this year, he's been quite bad. I think he's one of the worst top laners from the east uh, and secretly probably worse than breathe and actually maybe one of the worst top laners at this tournament he is such an inter like he sometimes does clutch plays and people remember that and always give him credit for it but they like i don't know it's never really like focused on the amount of times this guy actually ints or doesn't really provide anything he kind of ints when his team's already dead he's not like the reason why i think uh his team loses games but um, this was very apparent in the LNG series and apparent here in this game, too, where um, I think Bwipo just disrespected him. I think he just was like, I'm just going to run this guy down in the side lane eventually and kill him over and over again. Because that is such a king and thing to do, to just get caught in a side lane randomly. It happens all the time. So that, that's I my theory that's on Bwipo. I think that's a good theory. I'll, just, I'll leave it at that. But I think that's a good theory because 
Whipple is the type to disrespect. Like, he doesn't care about name plays. He doesn't care you won worlds. He's going to yeah. look at you and he's like, this guy's an inter dog. I'm going to destroy yeah. him. <laughs> this guy's an inter, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, let I, me just I take agree. Ghost, watch me run him down eight times in lane, guys. And then they lane swap me. He's like, oh. Yep. Yep. Oopsies. Um, <laughs> I, I did like uh, the rest of what FlyQuest is doing. I felt like um, they they were so behind, but then they just kept fighting and fighting. And because there's Danwon and they're just really not that good, uh, they, they were just getting sucked into it. And also, it's the champions they're playing, right? Like Vi, uh, Yone, Silas, Rel. Like, you just have to go in there. Um, they were just fighting nonstop, and it was kind of working for Flycast for a bit. I really do think they climbed themselves back at a certain point. It was like, in the in the very middle of the game, there was a lot more game played later, where uh, Danwon was much more favored. But I think they could have turned it around, and if they just chilled out and kept composed, they would have won the game. I think it was when... Um, FlyQuest, they were recalling in the top side. Masu got, like, smited, and then they lost, and they kind of doubled down, and some of them tried to save him or something, and a bunch of them died. That's when the game turned back, but there was a turn for FlyQuest where it was like, okay, if they don't drop this momentum, they're actually winning pretty hard. Um, so that was cool to see. Um, I think besides that one mistake that Masu made, he has been playing fantastically this tournament. Um, so yes. we saw in this, I think quad also had a bad early game on the Syndra, but then really brought it back later on in the game. Um, inspired, I think was fairly solid, but just kind of always in the wrong place. It felt like he was strong, but could never quite be there at the right time to get the big wombo with his team on the Amumu. He was kind of always picking people and getting like small one to two man plays or he'd get like one kill here, one kill there, but it just wasn't enough. Uh, and then Buzio. Honestly, a lot of missed Leon ultis, I'm going to be honest. He, he was landing his ease, but it was so hard for him to land a Leon ulti. Uh, it was the same in the PSG game uh, the next day, too. So, yeah, booze has got to clean it up a little bit on that Leona. Um, all right, last thoughts on that. Um, anything more? Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep Just going. we got a lot to talk about. Super well, so let's keep going. Yep. Um, let's see. We had Fnatic Gam. That's fine. PSG Bad Lions. You know, we don't really have to talk about that. Let's move on to the next day. Um, I think this is when we got our best of threes. Yeah. So we had Hobner Life, Gen G. Let's talk about this one. This was one of the peak moments of uh, world so far. This was a great banger series. Um, let me just get some of your thoughts and impressions. I have a lot to say about it. And then I'll, so I'll go next. Yeah. Yeah, so Thoughts and Impressions was a banger series. Really back and forth. A lot of like punch, counter punch gameplay so i think in terms of the skill displayed in the series i was pretty impressed yep. i think that in game one especially which is the han one life win uh even though it doesn't reflect on the scoreboard i thought zeka was actually quite good in this game mm -hmm. um like i always think viper is good so i guess that's something else but zeka was quite good in the sense that he didn't get that much attention resources or anything to play with was able to keep a lead over chovy mm -hmm. uh, throughout the game in terms of where he was on the map and then delight i mean we gotta we've gotta talk about that play which oh is, yes dude he just decided and i was like what where was that angle from and he just gets a huge three or four man knock into yep. i mean obviously it's super easy for zeka to follow up on your name game over yeah uh yep. incredible um and then silently, Doran like outplayed King a lot mm -hmm. of this game, even though King got Aurora, which I think is a clinically busted character. Yep. And so yeah, I mean Doran silently was a very good player on the first game. So that's how that's what I'll open up with. But the yeah. other two, I think overall we got to see um we got to see in my opinion, a little bit of a jungle gap. I don't really know what happened in the last two games in terms of why Peanut just felt like he couldn't play to the level that I expect. I think Peanut's the best jungler here. Mm -hmm. uh, the Korean junglers, at least, uh, mm -hmm. that came to the tournament. In terms of consistency, in terms of how what he's shown all year, he's just been at a very high level. Oh, sorry, I'll split. He's been at a very high level, so I expected with his experience, he'd look better than Canyon, who <laughs> has been very hit or miss. Like He had a very good Kane game last year, but... It, it, <laughs> He had a good spring. He had a good MSI, right? And then yeah, he, so yeah. um, I I'll, I'll keep it at that. I I also think that Chovy, um, did look like he was just very very hard to contain once he got on the Ari, which we we didn't say is the top meta pick, but it's still up there. I think yeah. whenever I see Chovy on a character like 
I mean, he was on every 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 game, but if he's playing like Smolder or something, I'm like, yeah, he's gonna play this well. But I am going to fall asleep. Like there is no. <laughs> I feel like the yeah. floor for good Smolder play is very high, but mm-hmm. the ceiling is not as high as you would think. It's very effective, but like a hyper carry player on Smolder is still not... how are you gonna ex- exemplify mechanics? Huh? Yeah, there's none. It's there's point none. and click. I think right? the character yeah. is so flawed. It's super yeah. fun to play, but it's extremely flawed as a character it's only fun to play because you're op the the reason why it's fun is because you're op you just click people and you burn true damage that can't miss and slashes i love that Um, yeah it's fun (laughs) so fun character also my last part of the run and i'll let you take out this amazing series is i think smother even though it didn't win i think it's disgusting game design it's too strong early the fact that it can solo lane and just like be a valid ad carry in mid clear waves do like extremely safe farming and then like hit its power spike way before KLO 16 power spike usually comes online, right? Yeah. And it's stronger than like Kale is like a minion. Yeah. A melee minion. Kassadin can't do anything pre six. Yeah. Meanwhile, it's like common to see Smolder just participate in roams, go over a wall, and just gank. Or yeah. well, it's not common, but it can do it, right? Flash so... in and die like humanoid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna chime in here. Yeah. Um. Definitely, the Aurora pick was picked three times by Keen. Uh, I think you summed up game one pretty well, where Genji was like, kind of like had really good macro stuff, and Hanwha Life was pretty much still in there. But uh, it was a pivotal like moment where Genji gets a pick, but then they group up. Delight kills him kind of just end that game game one uh, i also think that the yone one through was a big deal for hanwha life um to win that game and it's not like genji is stupid right they they know how good yone is they know how good zeka is on yone they know that yone's been dominating scrims in the tournament right they were testing it they wanted to see if they could beat it right it's a best of three you got to learn stuff on the big stage i actually think that learning and testing things was a lot of the reason why aurora also got through on the side of hanwha life in that they are not stupid. They know Aurora is really strong. Keen's probably the best Aurora player at this tournament. Um, but at the same time, right, you're going to get into best of fives and you have to maybe give something. You have to drop something. You have to see what you can um, kind of deal with in the ban phase. And so they're giving Aurora over to see what they can beat it with. And I just think that their attempts were really flawed. So I'm going to talk about Gen G's comp. They played it like three games, right? It's Aurora, Nocturne, Ari. And I think that um, it, it is obviously enabled by the fact that Aurora is busted. But the thing that it does so well that other comps can't do is that it's three damage champions. So you have damage in like all of your roles pretty much, right? Except except your, your support. Um, but it's all damage that can team fight, AoE engage, and it's non-committal. I think like those three combined are insanely OP in a world like today where um, damage is incredibly high, mechanics are super high, right? If you make one mistake, you're going to get comboed by Delight uh, or somebody. But when you're this hyper mobile and your engage is so non-committal, like you're already you're dashing in and out, you throw a charm. If you land it, great. You just fly in on Nocturne, you turn off the lights, Aurora comes out of nowhere, AoEs your whole team, goes into stealth, you can't touch her. She's just like messing you up super hard um and then whatever the bot lane picks right but if you don't land it on ari you just back off and you just chill ari's cooldown ulti cooldown is like 60 seconds of malignance right um aurora's ulti cooldown is so low that champion needs to be nerfed but you can't hotfix the world's patch so um i think it's such a broken combo i actually don't i think the things that uh hanwha life was testing is just not effective and that man like the can't do they can't give it i don't think they can actually give it as this tournament goes on i think they have to pit, drop another ban so you, i think you got to give like what are they banned? they're doing uh skarner and ziggs i think you just got to give like i think ziggs i actually think ziggs is probably a bit overrated because you can't pair it with an 80 key 80 carry mid right you're gonna pay tristana doesn't look very good this tournament um so that's that's something i'm gonna say about like what do you think about the comps and the and the drafts and um, this combo, yeah, I don't think you give a roar, I but like pretty cool, right? your theory that at the highest level, these teams have learned that playing to 3 0 doesn't really matter that much as long as you know you can win, right? Yeah, after and uh, when you're and that's a luxury only given to the top seed of like top one or two seeds of China and Korea, usually. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so I think this makes sense because we did just see Aurora let through three times in a row, and I'm like watching it, especially in game two. I'm like, yeah, that's probably a problem. No, like should yeah. we do something about that? Any anybody? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I agree. I actually really like that theory because it didn't really come to mind, but it makes a lot. It's like I think a lot of things are are really genius. Um, just me uh, praising you. A lot of things that are really genius tend to become common sense when you hear it, mm. but actually to come up with it out of the blue is not as easy, right? Because it's, mm. that's actually what a lot of common sense isn't that common. You have to like look at it. So all to say is like that would make a lot of sense. Both teams had their like this is our super comp like Aurora Nocturne and then some kind of roaming mage mage mid, which Ari is what Chobi is really good at. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, we think this is the best, but we aren't really sure if anything can beat it. Let's let Yone through. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They let right. Smolder through too and test it out later, and it worked, right? So they, they yeah, were testing. Smolder they're did trying nothing. Yeah. Well, not nothing. Did less. Yep. Um, yeah. So I, I do think that the testing thing was a big deal there. They're also testing bot lanes, right? So um, I watched uh, Cajal's co stream. Cajal's very locked into the draft. He knows these things in and out. Um, one thing mm-hmm. that I did notice about um, Game 3 is he thought the Leona was a bad pick um, just because of how the draft worked out, right, into Renata. Um, you know, Yone's not, or Leona's not very good into Smolder or Nar. They can hop out of the ulti. Um, but I think the thing that makes it so important that they got Leona and why they picked it Game 2 and 3 was that it's another form of non-committal engage. You just chuck that ulti out, and if it lands, you go in. If it you, like, you have the option to always start an engagement and kind of kite on the edges and either go full send it or not full send it but the entire time you're poking them you're chunking them you're getting into position you're turning off the lights they don't know what to do Hanwha life is a really hard time playing against this um and i think the thing that Hanwha life didn't figure out um that could have beaten this is just that thing i was talking about before it's single target engage and pairing it with enough cc that you just like stop them from doing their shit before you get comboed right so pretty much like they they almost had it in game two right but then not really they picked the vi i think the vi is key here vi or maokai or something like that is very key and you need to jump on ari or aurora before she does her shit and stop them kill them one shot them disrupt them um but they paired it with akali and rumble and that's just not enough CC. Like, if they had the Gnar again in Game 2 with the Vi, it's kind of a bad combo because it's, like, low damage, both AD. But at least you bring enough CC so that when you team fight or skirmish, you can chain CC an Ari or Aurora uh, so they do their stuff. But, like, if you're going to play a bunch of skill shot relied champions with CC, right, I think this is why the Rel started to make less and less sense for me is that... Like, you're playing against Chovy's Ari. <laughs> you're playing against Keen's Aurora. They're so good at their champions, you can't land combos consistently. Delight and made one of them a... has a spell shield, like... Yeah, exactly, right? Nocturne has a spell a shield. And also, Nocturne doesn't care if he dies. As long as he gets to turn off the lights, do some damage, burn a flash with his fear or something, it's enough. Yeah, uh, you know? Exactly. And then I think another big deal about uh, why this comp was working and why Hanwha Life wasn't countering it was that they always lost jungle prio. So I think Canyon just kind of had a bad game, game one, and Peanut had a good game. But you saw in game two and game three that um, when you play Nocturne into tanks or like something like Vi, you just outclear them super fast, and they can never duel you. So like Nocturne can't gank for you six. And then Vi and Sejuani can, right? But if you lane swap or if you don't get one of those ganks off, um, Nocturne clears faster. He's going to take all the grubs. He's going to take all the dragons. And now you're in a state where um, Aurora is also always winning lane top lane. You're just behind in the meta in addition to, or behind in tempo and gold, in addition to, like, there's just five carries just jumping on you, CCing you, kiting you and stuff. Um, so, yeah, that, that's kind of like my theory on, I think Hanwha Life needed to draft more CC with single target plus extra CC on the side, right? So you can even go to champs like Lissandra. Lissandra is like a common counter pick into Ari. You don't scale as well. But at least you can fight them, right? You can you can contest the early game. You can one shot them before they jump around and blow you up from far away, um, and you have your own AOE engage. But they're playing a Kali and Smolder, right? No CC. The Yonin works because it has CC that you can follow up on. But yeah, so that's I oh, I love this thing. series. We gotta yeah. mention the Twitch, right? Oh, the Twitch, yes. Yeah, like of I, course, it's actually of course. crazy. <laughs> 
That is true. Han or Genji actually cooks. The boring team becomes the not boring team. What the world we live in, right? Um, Pays cooks on the Twitch. I mean, I actually think this is the funny thing. I literally think you can play anything in AD carry, like in this comp. <laughs> um, so the Twitch was great, and Pays played it really well. But all he needed to do was do damage, right? Because everything else is being set up by this insanely good comp. Um, yeah. It, what, what else do you want to talk about? This is one of my favorite series. I love, obviously, I kept talking about it. So. Uh, I, I think he, I agree. Most AD carries work well there, but I do think that Twitch is a good pick oh, yeah. in the context of how that comp plays. Like, there are so many times where it's just like, dude, your threat can come from anywhere. I, While I hate Smolder and I hate characters like that, and I think Aurora is broken too, I do think the whole meta that like involves Aurora plus Nocturne and just like being able to just like pick someone and delete them is sick. Yeah, I love so the fun. concept. I just don't like that there's no punishment if you fuck up. Yeah. Um, which is the problem right now, right? Like conceptually, this is so cool. It's been so long since we've seen a good Nocturne meta. And like honestly, to my surprise, a lot of these teams are okay, these are the top teams in the world for the most part who are really doing it, but the teams are actually like playing Nocturne well, even though it hasn't been like that meta for a while. Dude, Nocturne Orianus also just a sick combo. It's kind of dumb getting to this point where how broken it is, but we saw Nocturne Oriana played by uh but pain gaming and some other teams too, right? So it's been fun. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is dumb. I will agree with that. <laughs> it's, but it's sick. Dumb, it right? is There's, sick. Yeah, it looks cool. Just, it looks cool. The lights <laughs> turn off. They combo it, and it's like it looks sick. And it takes a little bit of like prep, but honestly, as long as you're like within the super ball range, which is like a very long range, mm -hmm. it's not that hard, guys. But yeah. I love it. I'll still watch it and cheer and be like, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got wrecked by it hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I I'm a fan. I think it's very cool. Yeah. But I... it's not like it's not like peak League of Legends gameplay, but honestly, I think the spectacle, the more I watch League and enjoy it. Uh, the more I'm like, the spectacle matters. Yeah. It, it, like, the lane swapping with Arden Sense or Arden Sensor, like, yeah, very cool. High mechanic. Uh, yeah. What call it? Uh, high mechanic, high execution. Yeah. But I'm not going to be like, I'm going to be like, you're wrong, man. This is actually peak League of Legends when I, someone says this is boring. No, it's fucking boring. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Smolder is boring. Smolder, Ivor, and stuff is boring. I mean, let's just be honest, right? Maokai, right? Um, <clears throat> but yeah, let's let's move on, though. We've talked yeah, yeah. a lot about this, this series. Um, the next series, um, same day, was Dan Wan versus LNG. Much less interesting series, because it did feel like LNG completely outclassed them. Dan Wan was just running around inting, right? This is where we saw the worst of Kingen. He was a mega inter. A little bit of that Whippo... Mm -hmm. With the uh, with the uh, ghost teleport Olaf in the top lane, super useless. Um, anything really to comment on this match? I I just don't. I feel like Don Juan is like they, they're just another fanatic or another like Western team with slightly better players, right? In like Lucian and Showmaker and aiming. Very true. Yeah, <laughs> Don Juan is is pretty fake. But yeah, they're fun to watch, and I like that. Yeah. Um, I, the other thing to comment on is like how many international events do we just give gala kaisa when it's actually good and how many times are we just gonna not learn our lessons here like what is going oh on yeah here? yeah like this guy is true. this guy's still cracked i don't think he ever forgot how to be disgusting on that character yeah um now you know maybe we can say copium you know he didn't get to practice other characters sure but he's still world class at other characters it's just like whenever i see him on kaisa i'm like he has like an 85 percent chance of winning like yeah i i truly don't think he he is he is no, built normally on that character, so that's all. I just wanted to comment. Like, love watching him play that character. He's been taking names for like six years now, or something like that, or more yeah. on the character, which also tells me how disgusting it's been for so long. But whatever. Yeah, Kais is broken. Kais is very very strong. Um, definitely at this tournament, we're gonna see a lot more Kais of Pryo. I think she's gonna go up. She's already very high, but that's after a bunch of bands. But I think she should just be going up right now because. Um, when you go the W poke build, it, it's actually like one of the strongest late game champions in the game. But yeah. if you can poke people you with can Ws, never itemize against Akaiso. No, you can't, and you can never. Uh, she can always itemize against you, right? Because you can go uh, Zonia's, you can go Guardian Angel, you can go Banshees. They're all viable on her. Um, yeah. So she can build literally every item in the game except for maybe support items. Yeah, support and tank tanky. Yeah, you can go a you can go like a few tanky items. You can go AD AP. Usually the best build IMO is some mix of like Shiv. There's a Nashers included, a Gwinsu, and you've covered all your bases. Like yeah, you just, 
yeah it's just such a strong base and it's also not even like risky or anything it has good early game good way okay i'm, I'm done I, I love kaisa but like <laughs> it's so screwed up yeah this character's fucked up man there's just no reason for a character to be that good it's okay it's okay we have a lot of those these days so i think you just have to go into that world now you just have to accept that's what life is to these days um but yeah um let's talk about uh some other uh, galio i think uh is gonna go up slightly more in prio um against the ari it was shown right so that's something that maybe zeka could have thought about i don't know if he plays galio but playing galio into ari sounds much better than what he was doing because you won't be able to get ganked. You won't be able to just get comboed by Nocturne Ari as easily. Um, and you can actually CC them, right? So that's kind and of you interesting. You can match the roams without getting caught on the way to match the roam. True. It's hard into Nocturne ulti because you can't Galio ulti. So that is a bit of a, of a counter. But um, if you can true, get actually. if, if you can get it beforehand, it. yeah. Um, but I do like uh, Galio was played by Broken Blade in the next day. So let's let's just move on uh, past the series. Uh, G2 versus Weibo, since I'm already talking about it. Thank goodness we finally have a Western team beat an Eastern team. It was the fourth seed, but we take those. That was close as hell still, uh, but very fun. Um, Broken Blade on the Galio top. First blood on to breathe. Uh, one of the worst top laners in the Eastern region, but still one guess. of the best top laners in the tournaments, like better than most uh, Western top laners, right? But not Broken Blade, okay? Broken Blade... Uh, did show up against him, and I think that this Galio is just strong, and we'll see more of it throughout the tournament. It's not going to be like high prio or perma meta, but if you're going to pick Rumble or Ari, these sort of like mid range bursty type uh, AP champions, then Galio is actually quite strong. Um, also, it's mostly because of uh, the build right now with uh, what is it, Hollow Radiance Riftmaker. You do so much damage, you one-shot waves, and you're very, very tanky. I mean, that just sounds like a great combo, right? Um, but I, yeah, I think it's really strong right now uh, at the right circumstances. Um, but yeah, talk to me more about G2 Weibo, how you felt about this game. I would say it's one of the few matches where I didn't think that the Asian team, in this case Weibo, was playing holistically better pretty much anywhere except for maybe the AD carry. I do think Light is still really good, but mm -hmm. Han's played, you know, a good Callista. Yep. Uh, so I would say there's that. The solo kill from Broken Blade was sick. Mm -hmm. He put... I didn't... Like, I just watched that. I'm like, that was just the maximum damage you can put out of that character. That character only has a combo, but like he did it so clean. I'm like, okay. Yep. Okay, Broken Blade. I don't know when you practiced this, but cool. Um, not much else to say. I think... G2 played it well, nothing to complain about, and I think it was a reassuring game in that it at least shows that G2 is at the level of third seed from a top region. Yeah. And that's that's saying something. Yeah, I mean, and they're, they, you know, uh, third seeds from top regions always get close to contesting the actual number one seeds, right? They got very close to beating Hanwha Life. So I think G2 is the real deal. Um, this is good. They can still have room, so much room to improve, right? They could look at this game and be like, "Wow, there's a lot we could still fix and be even better," which is always great to have easily identifiable, identifiable um, paths to improve on for this team because I, I think they're very good. Um, one thing I did like um, about, I don't know, I, I I like and don't like. So Weibo, they're playing a lot of double ADCs, and I don't like that because it's just the meta we've been getting all year. But like. I kind of see why they're playing it. I kind of get it. It it feels like a lot of the meta champions um, that aren't like AD carry, double AD carry comps, they kind of run out of steam in terms of damage if you can out tank them, right? So um, the AD carries, double AD carries kind of fixes that where <clears throat> it felt like Weibo Gaming was behind and they were, yeah, they were behind the entire game and they were mostly losing fights, but it was always getting to a point where it was like, if Weibo Game actually played it a little bit better, they had more damage than G2, and they were actually kind of pumping. Um, and it was actually they were playing it well enough where it was really hard for G2 to get to the Orion and Nocturne combo as well. So um, I wonder, I'm afraid, but I wonder if we're actually going to see some Tristana mid lane now from other teams uh, or other AD carry mids, because I don't know if it's actually even that bad. Like I think it actually fits in some some circumstances. Um, yeah. Uh, one more thing I had to say about Galio. 
is that he recently got reworked in that mini rework where his passive is like a super low cooldown and it gets lowered whenever you uh, use an ability. So like you can just get like a bunch of passive procs off in one fight. So if you do that super high, is actually his damage output's crazy right now. Um, very strong champion. I, I've been playing him. He's fun. All right, let's uh, let's fast forward a little bit. We got a lot of games to cover still. We have uh, okay T1 BLG. All right, let's just talk about that one really quick. BLG first picked Ari. I don't think you do that. Ari is good, but I don't think you first pick the champion because I mean, um, is very good at Ari. I think of all the teams to try it at least, I think that they are the team to try it. Yeah. But yes, I agree. I think it's in true. principle the character is just literally no matter you hit all your spells, you just you just can't kill things. Yeah. Yeah. I also Sometimes. think I, I think like they got a lot of OP champions, but they just didn't really fit together well. Like um look how different BLG's comp is with Ari compared to um you know, Gen G's comp with Ari. Like they paired uh Gen G pairs Ari with like a Nocturne, which is a bunch of damage, but also like, you know, ton of AoE damage. And then this is a bunch of single target damage where, you know, the Skarner Ari combo is just it just wasn't pumping, right? It's just not big burst. It's just not one shotting somebody. Like you're they're killing people eventually because there's so much CC, but um multiple times off it would be a skarner combo into an ulti into the re full combo with the charm and everything and i was like they're still alive you have to keep chasing them down like you got a lot more work you got to put in to kill them uh happened to faker a couple times um so gotta agree with that with that damage that damage uh comment yeah on this game uh but otherwise i mean really fun game still it was uh it was very exciting t1 just freaking sent it so many times and like um a lot of them were working because um, their their whole comp. Look at that comp. It's just Nar, Vi, Silas, Callista, Nico. They they have one thing. They do one thing and they do it well. They go in. They fucking fly in there. Um, <laughs> any other thoughts on on this game? <laughs> no, I mean just other than it is a huge surprise. Like yes, BLG, you know, did maybe pick whatever comp, or whatever. But like the gaps between first LPL and fourth. LCK should be huge, bigger than this. Yeah, and I think it's partially just because T1 against certain teams and on the stage until its finals, very good team. Yep, very very good team. Never ever pick them, even if they're fourth seed and you're first seed, and you have the choice. <laughs> Dude, the consequences, <laughs> by the way, of that single action are still are resounding. It's insane. It's always, all roads lead to KT, man. <laughs> like, the world it's just KT's game, and we're just living in it. All roads lead to KT fucking up, right? Like, who knows if KT didn't do that and they changed all of last year, would Genji even exist in this form, right? Because KT would still have uh, Lahens and and Keen, I think. Um, so just absolutely insane. Everything it's always, it's always KT's fault. They it's don't always win KT's anything, fault, but it's always their fault. You can always you can go all the way back to the original Telecom Wars. It was it was KT's fault. It was what like someday back then was on there. That was crazy. Yeah, yeah. Adam and Eve. Yeah, Adam was KT's fault too. Mm. Oh my god. Not fanatics. <laughs> um. Anyways, uh, <laughs> um, I I do think um On has been underperforming pretty heavily. He's the main mm -hmm. underperformer for this team. Um, just getting caught a lot and not getting any good poppy stuff done. Uh, no good poppy ultis. He just wasted nope. that guy over and over again. Uh, the big one that's the big highlight is the owner deep engage onto Elk. Um, it was because. BLG was on Baron because they just picked Silas in the bot lane. Ran all the way to Baron. They're on it. On is spinning the pop ulti. He's going to knock somebody. But T1 just backs off. Uh, he puts his hammer away. And Owner just sends it in a 4v5. And this is what good teams do, right? Even though it's a 4v5, they know, hey, you have no R ulti. You have no Skarna ulti. We win this. We just send it. It uh, doesn't even matter if um, Jin flashes away. Uh, and they kill them all, <laughs> and they turn the game, and they just win it. So pretty impressive by T1, literally like losing the game up until they win the game. Um, so great stuff there. Um, let's move on to the the games we mostly care about, and let's just talk about TL versus Pain Gaming. This was the next day. Um, this yeah. was today. Um, was today, yeah. Yep, uh, that was today. I lived it recently. Yep, me too. I watched it live. I woke up early. It was like, what, 7.50 a.m. or something it started. Yeah, something uh, like TL 
two owed pain gaming, incredibly <laughs> clean. And the story. We're just <laughs> so much better than nothing else out of it. <laughs> Can't wait to see them in the league next year. So we yep. can farm them. Yep. 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 Exactly. Uh, oh, Battle of the Americas. Yep. Yep. Perfect I stuff. will say that while Pain did play it close, that was not a Pain gaming being a good team. I'm sorry. Yeah. Liquid was playing still bad. They're still playing a 4v5. Honestly, impressive they won a 4v5. Uh, why does there just look like a better top laner than Impact? Like, what what kind of line is that? Like, think about that. Um, yeah. So I think that yeah, there's just so much that was wrong going wrong <laughs> for Liquid, and the fact that they won is just because the other team was so bad. Yep. Yep. Gotta gotta agree with that sentiment. Um, let's just talk about game one, right? I think uh, Impact had no impact. He just wasn't doing anything, was not really involved. Uh, he had 4 KP. I mean, to be fair, Wiser had 4 KP, right? But uh, he was just super behind in farm, super behind in just, like, gold and XP and everything, and Wiser was just, a, like, a mega tank. Um, Umti, I think, was playing... I don't know, he wasn't playing that bad. He was playing fine. He was playing okay. Um, I, I, I have been pretty concerned about Umti. I think he has such a big case of the right place right time but when he gets there somehow he messes up even just a little bit right so it's just a little bit sometimes something is not that bad but it's like <clears throat> whatever i see something like yeah you could have played that a bit cleaner you it's okay how i think of him yeah i think of him as ex smithy without hands <laughs> Yeah, a little yeah, I'm bit. I'm not even yeah. saying Smithy had hands. I'm just saying yeah. he's, he has much worse hands. Yeah, he does. Smithy had hands in a lot of pivotal moments in his career, but Umti he feels like one major bad play, which was the Sejuani play, <laughs> and that's yeah. it. Literally every other time you needed him, this guy was the definition of chill yeah. under under duress. And like, if he wasn't so chill that like you know he didn't practice much, I'm pretty sure Team Liquid could still run him. At, well, if we snapshot his level, I guess if he yeah. really got worse, maybe it would be a lost cause. But yeah, all I'm saying I, is, X Smithy is like the longer it's been, the more I've appreciated this guy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, especially as the game goes on, we've cycled more board team liquid junglers. <laughs> um, yeah, APA, I think um, he played well this game it, it's another one of those things where it's similar to umti where it's like right place right time playing mostly well you're just not landing those charms you know what i mean you're just kind of just throwing them out there so gotta work on that um i think yon played pretty well i think he played very well actually he he was the shining star of this game one and is why he, they won uh kaisa's absolutely broken champion once you get late enough into the game with enough items uh with his build and stuff and yeah he carried the game because he um just got mega fed eventually and they just they just, <laughs> just fucking rolled him yeah <laughs> um, I, I like how like I, I was like oh is he gonna say something like something witty he's like no dude he just he just played the numbers game he destroyed them he really did he just farmed like a like a madman i mean he had a hundred cs up but he um was full build when titan was three items right he just <laughs> he just farmed a storm and just started one shot and he played mechanically that last fight as well as you could oh, ask for on it guys so, yeah it's just really yeah. really fucking clean um we, we finally saw ewc slash msi young like that yeah. was so good and that it was, was really under good. pressure too it's not like it was a it was not a small deal. They f oh, okay. Let me get into. It. They gave up Ocean Soul for oh, that yeah. Baron, and I'm oh, sitting yeah. there like, wait, you didn't need to do that. You guys win a fight. You're up five, six k. Like, what yeah, are we doing? We're up a lot. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was nine to seven, so they couldn't maybe tell. But like, you're at a level where we couldn't tell about the goal lead is not a good excuse. You have to be, you gotta do better. You don't even have to look at the goalie. You just count what items you have, what count items they have. It's it's always that's just always what matters. And they just have an insanely fed Kaisa, right? <laughs> and they have an insanely, insanely fed Ari. Ridiculously too. too. Yeah. Ari was insanely fed too. This is an Ari with death cap. Like uh APA was mega ahead of this game. Um gotta talk about the smite as well. Happened for both players. Um but holy cow, that was not a good smite or no, that was a lack of smite from Umti. Very disappointing to see that. I, I think that's the first one we've seen in a long time where someone just forgets to smite and they get something stolen. That 
gave me an actual heart attack this morning. Uh, but it's okay. It, it mattered too. They were getting like they got sold. Yeah. They got sold because he just literally did the laziest smite on the biggest stage. He didn't smite. Yeah, he just says fuck it. Well, I don't need to smite. <laughs> it's fine. I, I, I think like really to talk about it and like it might sound like I'm overreacting because of this one game. Yeah. But I think um the problem with this roster is I think they're the closest to like the perfect NA macro team we've ever had. But yeah. because of like Umpty specifically, they're capped. Yeah. Uh, and the yeah. problem is you can't just replace them. It's never that easy. It's not no. just like I give I put Dardock in here and he has no. hands, so this will be better. Like that doesn't <laughs> obviously we're not gonna choose Dardock, but you know what I mean, right? We used yeah. to do this. I, yeah, I, I I just true. lived through enough Team Liquid nightmares where I'm like it's like finally not a nightmare, but it's still almost like a monkey's paw. Where like I finally chose a team that can macro, but yeah. at what cost? At what cost? They just fucking choke it. Like they I mean, choke it, and they don't know. choke it in the team liquid way that like uh, would bother me in the past. They choke it in that they're just there's just not enough in the tank. Yeah, there's it's, the, like, it's such know. a frustrating reason. Yeah, it is rough. I mean, the OG situation was like, Smithy for Broxa, right? I mean, even that roster. Broxa went three and three at Worlds. He he entered all year long and he still showed up at the world stage, which is funny. But man, that that was the original curse situation, right? Where you're just like tr trying to just switch a jungler and and be like, we just pick Xmithy, put him in the same situation, slightly better hands, we're just better, right? And it turns out that Xmithy just doesn't gel with the rest of the team. Uh, also, COVID double fleeting had. You mean Broxa doesn't, doesn't gel with the rest of the team? Yeah, Brox doesn't gel with the rest of the team. Yeah, like Smithy gels with the entire team, and you know. Yeah, yeah. And that, that I think back deal. then we just didn't value that as much because I get it. We wanted to get to the higher skill ceiling, the yeah. better hands player. At least looking at Europe, was the guy who went to World Finals. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, you were selling the dream to the investors. It made sense. Like Smithy also wasn't practicing. I think that's the major reason. Yeah, and I think that's also why Double Lift uh, left as well, because there was no MSI that year, and he got lazy. Okay, we're just going down a rabbit hole. Anyways, uh... <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have to do those what if um, conversation we talked about after yeah. this season's over. I'm st I'm not forgetting that we talked about it. Oh last, yeah, uh, right after Spring Split. Yeah, that's true. A lot of what ifs. A lot of what ifs. So many what ifs this year as well. Uh, I mean, Cloud Nine's the biggest what if. Anyway, okay, we're getting off topic. Uh, Team Liquid. Um, in game two, okay, so they win game one, fine. Game two, oh my god, like, I actually did not know if we were going to win or lose. It was much closer, <laughs> because Orion and Nocturne, we just kept getting wrecked by it. Um, I think it was also in game one, too, we got wrecked by it by the Baron, where Umti and Impact are, like, sitting in the Baron, like, just looking at them, and they just get Orion and Nocturne comboed. Oh, yeah, and then Kais, oh my, we're back to game one. Um, or Yeon barely steals the, dra uh, the Baron. He kills the jungler just in time, and the jungler smites, and then he dies right after he smites. And then Yeon takes the Baron in game one. Like, imagine almost losing that game to a flip on Baron. Crazy. Game two is no better, though. Game two is no better. Uh, we get Orion and Nocturne comboed over and over again. APA is mega fed, and he... It's almost it's almost LG all over again. It's literally almost <laughs> LG all over again. It's like uh, the, I think he got saved by one play because Titan didn't flash the Nico ulti in that last um, fight where Nico, or APA flanks Titan while he's Jin ulting. Titan doesn't flash the Nico ulti. I have no idea what, how the game goes if Titan, Titan just flashes that, but he just. He just tanks it and he dies. He gets one shot, right? It goes better for them. I'll tell you that. Yeah, it goes a lot better. Yes. So uh, yeah, terrifying yeah. game. Um, yeah. APA also early game too. Jadon's just sitting there. He's just chilling in the lane. APA walks away, joins the wave, and just ults. Yeah, so look at what I'm watching. I'm like, brother, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, I know um BRTT, I believe his name was, is like double is like eternal rival, or whatever. That's <laughs> Yeah. But this is like Chitan, like did you just like get the spirit double? Like did you just totally forget he literally was on your screen? Yeah. <laughs> like two seconds ago. <laughs> so I had a great laugh at that. I'm like That's funny. Okay. And again, it shows I think what's that's what's what's frustrating though. He APA is actually a top like not the only thing maybe behind his uh not maybe, only behind his Ziggs. Like he is a top tier, Nico. He has mm -hmm. been merchanting this for a long time. So him not being able to pull it out earlier just pisses me off i like they, if they play through play-ins i promise you he can do that combo i don't know it's just it's ridiculous to me um it was also a smaller studio again but we can get into this anytime 
but this yeah. studio is tiny for how hype these games have been. So many sick moments that should have been like roaring crowd. Oh, uh, it's true. So and yet, true. Liquid is choking when there's no crowd. Yeah, and they were doing fine at MSI and EWC. I'm just gonna, I'm going to cry. They Anyways. are. That there's really no way to sugarcoat it. They are choking the mechanics. Their hands. Yes. Their hands are just like an unforgivable place to choke. Oh, okay, and then uh, now we have to talk about impact. This is this is the impact game too. Like this this game two was where impact was like actually getting super hard gapped by Wiser. Um, I think game one he was a bit invisible, but game two impact is just kind of just feeding in the side lanes. Um, just kind of walking up to Wiser, getting out traded. Uh, and then just like, I think the most dumb thing I've seen Impact do in a long time is that he's pushing top lane. Uh, I think he has like Korja J or Umti behind him or something, but he just uses his hop in front of the turret to get extra attack <laughs> speed. And Zale points it out immediately, and then he just dies. <laughs> like, <laughs> Wiser just, just walks up when to you him. describe it because, like, I remember watching it, and I, like, my brain was just numb. I'm like, okay. Yeah. He described it. I'm like, no, that actually is ridiculous. Yeah, he just died, man. And again, and was this like, is the, the paragon fuck? of consistency. Like, truly, one of the best, like, top lane seasons in a while. Yeah. For a full season, right? Like, Summit had a better regular season when he debuted, but his playoffs was obviously worse. Mm-hmm. Like, no, he had he was good all season. So we're just like, dude, it wasn't even, like, playoff impact. It was just impact. It was yeah. the GOAT. Yep. The unanimous the MVP first pick. Uh, yeah. Not MVP, sorry. Uh, first team. Well, also MVP. I mean, he was nearly a unanimous MVP, I bet. Like, oh, yeah, oh yeah. my god. Um, both almost unanimous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was insane how good he was. Um in summer but i also Who think it wiser yeah Who i mean <laughs> hey let's not disrespect wiser i do think that there was a there is a problem in the top lane pool of na this year like um like let's look There's at a problem look, that Boipo is our second best yeah exactly i mean look at this guy we, <laughs> i forgot to talk about fly versus psg we should go we should wrap back around to that one because that was hilarious we've kind of ignored uh psg and also fanatic but yeah we should be talking about them eventually yeah, yeah, let's let's uh, we have this to talk about. Let's not really talk about Mad Lions, whatever. Gam beat them, great job. Um, but like we'll talk about FlyQuest right after this. But like Impact, Wiser. I mean, let's not disrespect Wiser. Okay, let's not disrespect Pain Gaming. Okay, they're going to the Americas. Impact should be better. Team Liquid should be better than this team. But like honestly, the problem with Pain Gaming is not their hands. The problem with Pain Gaming is they have no idea how to play macro. They have All no hands, idea. No brain. Exactly. They they are coached yeah. by Team Liquid's coaching staff. Exactly. Might actually be competitive or better than Liquid in some ways. There's not like Liquid is full of hands. Yeah, I mean Teton is actually a talent. I mean that guy is hilarious. Yeah, he's very good. At least top four. Yeah, maybe top three these days. But who knows? Yeah, he's. I mean, he's definitely better than Berserker this year, at least, right? Um, so (laughs) like he's good. At least. Yeah. Players. Yeah, I mean, so. I, I think, you know, no disrespect to Pain Gaming, they they were really close if they just had cohesion, if they had systems, if they had, you know, a million dollar company backing them, like who knows. Yeah, you're what really they could good. Do. Just work on macro team fighting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I agree. It's just funny. Yeah. <laughs> you started with that line, I was like, Oh, yeah, it's yeah. the meme. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um yeah, I mean just other just some other little things too for Team Liquid. Like they're just not doing like the little tiny things that they just need to like clean it up a little bit, right? Like Eon, you know, just like take cleanse, man. Just take cleanse. I feel like the barrier was completely useless this game for him. It bar- it never so many saved. People are allergic to cleanse. I really I, don't get it, dude. And, and he take never needs it. Aram. Yeah, I don't even know what the other team is running. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, that's true, dude. I take cleanse and I don't even use it half the time. I use it late. And I just, or I use it early and I just use it for tenacity, you know, it's great. Uh, but um, I wish Eon just took cleanse, you know, I wish APA just could land some better combos. Like, it, like we have seen so many Nikos land the craziest combos in the history of Nico, like being reworked into this version. Um, she, she, it's not that hard. Like, it is hard. I know it is hard, but, like, when you're at a high, high level, landing a big Nico combo is, like, I don't know. It's, like, not that hard. Like, the champion's super hard, OP. Your your player has done it. Yeah. This the champion's super OP when you have Flash Proto Belt. There's, like, no counterplay when you do it from stealth, right? Like, it, it, it is a very strong 
combo and champion. I mean, Faker was playing it too. Uh, I was doing kind of so. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. We're just whining about Team Liquid at this point. Let's move on. I just Let's move really on. Really don't like that this team has so much potential, and I'm just sitting here sit- watching them lose to dumb reasons again. Yeah, and it's the, like the, the yeah. potential not in like the TSM way, where it's like, oh, you know, they were dominant with their hands. They actually were winning scrims. Like that is still good, but it's like almost more convincing when I just see a holistically good team in a way that we as NA traditionally just cannot do. Yeah, and that's not us. And their macros cracked, out macroing, yeah. you know, T1 in an early game or something like that. And even if it's one game, is ridiculous. Like that's unthinkable. Yeah. I, I do think our macro, if like we could just slot in better mechanics, it is better than most of like the third seeds and fourth seeds of the Asian regions. Like, Agreed. I think our macro is better than Danwon, way better. I think macro is way better than uh, Weibo Gaming. Um, I think it's probably they just got Which the better. Not of a own. high bar, but that it's just unusual, right? I mean, it's not a high bar, but like these teams are beating us. These teams are going to consistently beat western teams like no matter how you look at it the weibo gaming and dk have to play against honor life and blg on a regular basis right um it's not really fair to compare that's why tl is so interesting is that you can make direct comparisons and be like yo tl has like genji level mechanic or macro and like monkey level mechanics like it's it's just kind of ridiculous it's a cool combo i guess <laughs> yeah, we don't it, it's never like this never. yeah it's usually There's not. There's like yeah. some C9 teams that have good Never, yeah. chalk calling, right? Good yeah. team fighting. But macro, like the... Hey, like, tell, go back in time and say, hey, an NA team is going to out macro in a lane swap meta against yeah. the Korean teams. I guess that LNG. Sound, that just sounds and like Weibo. a fanfic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, anyways, that's enough of TL. We're going to talk about... Our last thing we're going to talk about is predicting the next stage. So we will talk about them again. But let's let's wrap back around to FlyQuest versus PSG. That happened actually the day before. But this was um, a, a, a rematch from MSI. We got knocked out by them. You know, good, good, good fun there. Um, but it was also very pivotal in, I think, the trajectory of worlds for na and that this was an this was a must win game right the must it was a must win series for tl as well but this was a must win game for flyquest um it gives them so many more opportunities to uh make it out now because they can upset hell in life and then they have another life after right um for best of threes so we got the inspired um ivern i do think unfortunately we're gonna get this banned against us no matter how you look at it i think everybody's gonna absolutely just ban Ivern because it is busted the way inspired plays it he was like what six items like at 30 minutes and he was just chilling for super long uh because he's just like the farming god um his items are super cheap and he's just playing it very well and then when you have masu on your team who's just super cracked i think man what a what an absolute delight to watch um true na talent um just Super unexpected to find out that this guy was going to be this good this year. Um, really great. He's a rookie. So, we're going to glaze Mazu. Um, let's talk about Bupo. <laughs> Do you want you want to talk about Bupo? I don't know. I, it was amazing. <laughs> I think that will get banned, not because necessarily they're the most OP dominating, you know, I'm going to run three circles around you in jungle, right? Yeah. I think that everyone just saw in 4K that if Whippo has this character, he can play like an (laughs) idiot, which he sometimes does, and it actually is optimal. Yeah. But I don't think Whippo did anything different. I think his teammates just adjusted. Yeah. I think that's extremely concerning, not because like, honestly, like, cool, you know? Like, awesome. You like have a problem and you have a workable solution. That's cool. What yeah. the problem is, is it, it doesn't feel like this was the time to blow that load because that's like a, we pull this out and like this play style works when you're, you know, at Elam point. But I get it. This is Elam point. But the, the problem is we want them to have it in a best of five. And then you're yeah. panicking like, oh, God, the tree man. What do we do? No one yeah. plays the tree man like this. I, I think, unfortunately... I'm just going to be honest. With the level of play that FlyQuest is at, and mostly just the level of play Blippo's at, and a little bit of quad, is that if they don't pull out their best stuff against PSG, I don't think they win. <laughs> like, I don't think they're they're good enough to just like win playing standard against 
FlyQuest or PSG, like guaranteed convincingly. Like in a, like the they, best of one, yes. In the best of one, like they could beat PSG playing standard, I'm sure. Um, right? Like, you know, PSG played as standard as it gets. They played Nar Ari Vi with Rel Jin. Like this is the most standard you can get. And then FlyQuest, they did a little something something with the Ivern and the uh, Cassiopeia. But like, you know, FlyQuest, they have to outdraft you. Uh, to win a game. I think FlyQuest's main strength is outdrafting a team and like picking something that eventually outscales you, right? And that, that's what the the Ivern and the Kaisa and the Cassio was is you just tank their stuff. And the let, let's, I'm going to like really go in on Bupo in that he's just running in there pressing buttons like the first couple of times it worked, it looked good. After that, it just looked like he got lucky cuz he's flying in there there's like nobody nearby. <laughs> he gets bailed out just barely after just taking the full combo. Like there's no mechanics behind it. There's no skill. He just EEs, tries to stun buddy, stun somebody. He gets CC'd before he can stun somebody. And he just walks out because he's too tanky because he has Steric, Spirit Visage, and Ivern Redemption and Shield. Like, it's just like so it yeah, stupid. It doesn't look like he calculates anything. They just, enemy <laughs> teams run out of damage and it's just invested everything to him. Yeah, exactly. And then, like, you know, PSG, they burn three or four ultis, and Kaisa just flies in. And let's be honest, Masu had some of the most insane mechanics on Kaisa we've seen at this tournament. But yeah. it's, it's just like, it's easy mode, right? You just start frying them, landing everything, hitting them, kiting them like crazy. Um, you know, PSG had a lot of good moments. There was this one ridiculous time. I was watching Cajal's co-stream on it, and it was just the funniest thing hearing him react and also very sad. But PSG, like, they got a, they get a quick pick onto Bwipo in top lane, right? And while they're doing that, um, FlyQuest is trying to play on two lanes. They're trying to Rift Herald mid and push bot, right? And they, they pick him top, and then FlyQuest is in mid with the Rift Herald, and they're just, like, messing around in front of Ari, in front of the turret. Maple flies in, he charms Inspired, and then PSG just walks from top straight to mid, they get a kill, they walk through river, they get another kill on Buzio, who's just sitting in a bush, and then they go by, and they kill Masu, and they kill uh, the rest of FlyQuest, um, and, and Quad and stuff, and it just feels like PSG, they just go top, they go mid, they go bot, and they just kill all FlyQuest. They just literally ran down the map and just picked up four kills. Like, it was so sad. <laughs> and it's just, it's just things like that that make me realize that, like, FlyQuest is just not disciplined or coordinated enough that like that um that they're gonna that you know they have to pull out their best stuff against every team they have to play like every game is is yeah, their last because mm -hmm. um that's, that's their level like and i do think it's the same for tl right like every every game is do or die at this point um we're not at the level where we can just test stuff like genji hanma life uh and that's true and like sad. if you go 2-1 and you lose out everything right 2-3 yeah, you're still gonna be remembered as you know, like that's pretty good. For as far yeah. as nice concert, that's pretty good. Yeah, we get we better get it out. We better be one of that one Western team that gets out because we're getting to the draw where it's almost guaranteed that we're gonna get a West versus West match in the two three area, yeah. uh, or the two two area that we're gonna get at least one Western team. We might even get two because so many Western teams are in this area still in the tournament, right? Uh, I think last year one of the problems is what was like TL got eliminated way too early and um, energy got out, um, which was great, but we only had one Western team uh, and G2 had to like drew BLG and stuff like that. So, uh, but I do think it's possible to get two Western teams out this year because we're just going to face each other. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, okay. I think that's all the games. We've pretty much covered everything we, I wanted to cover. Um, anything we want to say before we predict to the next phase. And then we should probably call it. This is a long ass podcast. So, nope. That's, nope. Okay. That's it. That's all right. Podcast is all I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's predict the next uh, phase of games. Hmm. Um, we got Top Esports versus Danwon. This is to make it out. Um, I, I'm just gonna say it. I think it's Top Esports either two zero or two one. Um, two zero. I think Top Esports is just a whole different caliber. Top Esports yeah. is a team that legitimate could contest Genji or HLE on the right day. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the Top e We didn't even talk about the Top Esports uh, Genji game. That was insanely close. You cannot give Chovy uh, Yon. Um, yeah, nope. that was disgusting. Uh, but anyways, um, I, I agree. Top Esports. It's probably just two zero. Yeah. Okay. Hanra Life Fly. Uh, 
We should talk about this more, but I really don't think there's much to say. I think Hobbit Life is just going to 2-0 Giga Stomp them. Uh, <laughs> do you have anything to say about this? Um, what, what's your overall... What, what's your percentage for FlyQuest getting a game here? There's there, there's no percentage. There's no percentage? Okay. Because it's like, okay. okay, here's the thing. There is a world where NA can upset BLG. BLG mm. is a very good team. Mm-hmm. It's still a tournament favorite, despite how shaky they've looked. Yeah. There's a world. There is no world where Hanwan Life loses to Bipo. Yeah. Even though, yes, it is Doran. But like all the memes aside, Doran objectively has been doing well for yeah. a while now. I, I can't, like, in good faith, meme him that hard when he's actually a pretty good player. Hey, d- like, let's not knock Doran, okay? Doran is one of the best top laners as long as he's not playing against, like, other top top laners right what was the, some of the other best he chokes it in like high stake matches against the best players he's not going to choke it in the group stage against um you know good old FlyQuest, good old Bupo. so yeah it's true uh i think this is a 2-0 i think it's really hard to say that we would ever we would ever take a game here this is no shame on FlyQuest either we're just yeah, different like leagues like most people <laughs> like, yeah like, you take a game if we take one game we won yeah, like, no, that's insanely like impressive. Like, we actually yeah. just bring the trophy home. Yeah. <laughs> and that would be very impressive for FlyQuest. I hope. See, that's why, I, like, I think it's possible for us to take a game, at least, because we will play the draft, right? And we will just mm. com- do some exotic. Like, there is a, there is a world where Hogwarts Life disrespects FlyQuest and give us Ivern, and we cook something. Like, I don't know if it's possible, but if we do get Ivern Smolder or something, like we could win that shit. Like we 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 could stall and stall and we could win it, um, perhaps. Um, so it's possible there. Um all right, let's move on though. Probably two zero. Uh G two versus T one. What a banger draw. I think some of us were curious about G two T L being drawn together because it would guarantee a Western team into quarters. Um I'm kinda glad we didn't get it, and I'm kinda glad we got um um we got the good old gam uh much nicer for us but um yeah g2 t1 actually no could we have drawn them no i think we were no, different no, we brackets were fanatics what you're thinking of oh mm-hmm. yeah we could have drawn fanatic we could not oh no FlyQuest could have drawn g2 that's right and then yes, we would have yes, guaranteed yes. uh western okay that's what i was trying to say um but yeah no g2 t1 hype matchup we'll take it um I think this is very close. I don't think you can definitively say that even though T1 has been favored this year, that you know T1 is just going to definitively take this. Who, who do you have? Who do you think? I think based on re- recent momentum as well as the quality of teams that both teams had to face and get experience on. Okay, G2 did have to play against Pain, but uh, I think that G2's experience against Hamwa. Excuse me. <clears throat> and also beating Weibo is a little bit more valuable than the version of Billy Billy the T1 beat. Um, and then Pain, oh, I guess T1 also had Pain, and then yep. they lost the top. Like I don't think T1's actually gotten that much good reps in. I think they still sh- they had a really terrible first game, right? A game against Pain, which is a wash, so that's equal. And then they had a game against Billy Billy, who like yes, they played well. But Billy Billy also just, you know, doesn't look like they know the meta, right? So, yeah. like, what has T1 learned so far this tournament? They, they, I feel like the drafts that T1 have been doing, they're going to have to change it if they want to beat G2. But they're doing those all-in super hyper-engage comps, right? And I think that G2, it's just not going to work against G2. Um, so I do think that if the versions that we've seen of T1 come out, I think G2 takes it. If there's a draft change from T1, they adapt to stuff, um, then I think they can take it. Um, because, yeah, I, I, I got to agree. With what we've seen so far, um, I do think this is G2, like 2-1. I think no matter what, it's going to be a 2-1. Um, I think it's oh. G2-2-1. I wanted to believe it's 2-1. It's going to be close, I though. I want it to be G2-2-1 because that is the world yeah. where maybe, just maybe, we get two Western teams Yep. Into playoffs. Because there's a world where the NA matches against NA, right? Yeah, and then there's a world where G2 beats T1, and then we just get T1. <laughs> Which is fine. You know, you know at that point, I, I don't like it. Actually, I dread it. I'll <laughs> yeah. take it over a disaster class where we like just 
I don't know. Just don't because it, it's not a world's win if we don't or not a world's. It's not a great world's even if we hit quarters in my mind if we can't like actually beat a legitimate team. Yeah, yeah like energy. Energy beating G2 was the reason why it felt good last year, right? Because yes. G2 was exactly. smacking everybody. Um, if TL gets through because they beat GAM and then they beat, like, FlyQuest or something, it's going to be feel very disappointing that they basically only beat well cards and another NA team to make it through yes. to People, <laughs> the group stage. Including maybe us. We'll say it's kind of... It's there, and it's a good achievement, but it's an asterisk. It's like when we beat H2K. No. Or not H2K, uh... Oh, actually, we'd be a freak of freaks when we hit semis. They just yeah. were so bad, I forgot. But, like, you know, EU hitting semifinals with H2K, like you said, right? They beat Elvis, Knox, Luna in quarterfinals. Because oh, Elvis... yeah. <laughs> That's what it was. It was so egregious. Yeah, it's like, wow, semifinals. Elvis, Knox did, like, almost beat G Tigers or whoever they were that year. Coup no, Tiger. they did beat them. They knocked them out. No. Yeah, they knocked. They beat GE Tigers in a crazy banger when their mid laner was playing Ari and smurfing on them. He was like nine and one. I thought that game was the one they barely lost, and they beat someone else that was a banger game. No, no, no. They beat that, and they beat Alliance, and then Alliance. Oh, and they got beat Alliance. And then C9 beat Alliance, and then the, or no, no, that was sorry. Alliance C9 didn't was beat Alliance. Kabooms here. Yeah, that was Kabooms. Uh, no, it was uh. No, well, it was well, Alliance. It was it, it was it was another e, it was Elements or something. It was another EU team. That was, had Froggen on it. Elements has ever made worlds. They were pretty bad. No, no, that team had Froggen. That was basically Alliance. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't called Alliance, well, but we'll I check, know we'll it was. We'll check it later. We'll check the tape. <laughs> it was an EU team. It was Froggen's team, okay? It was Froggen's team, and it was the Tigers. Um, it was with Prey. I know that for a fact. They lost to Albus Nakasuna. Anyways, mm-hmm. there are fraudulent ways to get to quarters, and I think that TL or FlyQuest are on the journey to a fraudulent quarters because they could just be wildcard teams into each other to make it to quarters <laughs> at this point it's possible it's actually well, very possible because tl is playing possible, game and i i, I more and more understand why swiss was implemented because it is more exciting yeah. and more fraudulent ways of getting there will happen but the old <laughs> system was just depression so yeah the old again, system had meaningless games which was terrible a terrible meaningless format. games and like you just saw the same matchup over and over and it was boring yeah. Yeah, um, but yeah, okay. So G two T one. I think we're both going G two T one or something like that, yep. right? G two T one. I yep. I'm I don't think it. there's a world they cleanly win two zero, even if T one is off their game. Yeah. But at the same time, I really want to believe. I think they have to fight for it. I I don't think there's any version of T one that is not a dirty fight. No matter how low they get, how weak they are, whatever their form is. It's always going to be a fucking struggle, bro. <laughs> T1 is just like that at Worlds and International in general. Um, just think about MSI, right? Like they That, that five-game series, T1 just barely managed to get through and win that five-game series. Um, BLG versus PSG, like, I'm actually down for the upset. I just, I just really don't think it's going to happen. If PSG was looking better this tournament, I might be considering an a- upset yeah, considering I mean, how bad BLG is. It took them to was. five games <laughs> And this this year, yeah. But the problem is, is that um, PSG does not look very good this tournament. They have looked sus. They lost to Mad Lions, by the way, which is egregious. Um, and they lost to FlyQuest, which is you know get wrecked. But still, they lost to us. So I just, I just don't think that this version of PSG has what it takes to take BLG down. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I, I am gonna go to. I'm gonna go two O BLG actually. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's controversial. It's 2-0, mm. even though, yes, there's the history. Yeah. You ha- you got to trust your eyes at some point. You can't just say, history happened this way, so therefore this time it'll be the ex- again. Yeah. Even no. though I do want to say that for sometimes. I, I, I want... I, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I want to... PLG. I like PSG. I like them as a team, as an org, the history of Flash Wolves, it, but I just can't really... It's just a legendary org, myself, and the fact you know. that they... They're like they're actually the underdog story before Gigabyte Marines got to this point. Yeah. No, they they had... They were the, the original Korean killers, right? Nobody could take them down in that like special era where um, like only Korean teams, and it was just Korea versus Korea every finals and stuff like that. Um, yep. yep. But, they uh, okay. were just taking games off Peak T1, yep. and then losing to a wild card. Yep. Fucking <laughs> might have been us. Uh, <laughs> um, anyways, uh, Fnatic Weibo Gaming. 
Oh boy, is Fnatic bad this this tournament? Oh my god, this oh year. Oh my god, they might actually have the worst brains of every team in the group stage. They they have some. It's like some hands and no brain. Like we were talking about, some teams are like all hands and no brain. This is like some hands no brain. Like yes, really which, no brain. Which makes it more pronounced, right? Because you see hands play, which most people construe as brain, <laughs> but as we know, the best mechanical players in the world aren't necessarily smart. Yeah, no, these guys just fight. They see, they see fight, they go fight. They see champ, they go fight. Like they're playing Smolder. They're giving Yon up. Did you see the interview from Jun? The very controversial interview yeah, yeah. that he, he later backtracked like, on. We we wanted to ban it. Yep. And then we just, I don't know, we lost our minds. And then they backtracked. <laughs> they, like which means it's got to be true or mistranslated. I, but I definitely think it's, think true it's coaching. Because it just feels like it fits too much. Yeah, the coaching staff and or whoever the leaders of the team are. Are cooked in the head. They apparently in the interview he said that at midnight the night before they they decided they were going to ban Yon. Now I'm like revolutionary idea. What a crazy thought. We ban Yon when we're on red side. Who would have come up with that? Right. And the then they, did it. they figured it out. <laughs> and then on the day of apparently like a few hours or maybe even an hour right before the match they said they weren't going to ban Yon and I guess they were going to trade it for Smolder. And it's just like. Humanoid on Smolder, this guy looks like he's never played it before. He is flashing in, he is roaming and ganking 24-7. All you have to do is watch a single game of Chovy play Smolder, and you would understand you never have to play like that. You don't have to just roam 24-7. You don't have to watch Chovy play, you just play the character for once it's in true. your true. I mean, just it's play it as well. Yeah. There's no character that has a more, like, extremely character-defined win con. Like, yeah. it is the logical extreme of min-maxing a play style. Yeah, just sit just there and farm. farm and you win. Like, yeah. yes, you can still fight for some reason because the character is terrible. He designed. You can still yeah. fight and win. Cool. Great. Yeah. But don't. Especially not the way he's doing, where he's popping E first, running at them, and then realizing that he wasn't even within... There was no universe where he's winning that. Like, the trade top. And I'm just like watching this team. They make a good play and then they just can't help themselves. They actually, their brain, their brain quota ran out every time they make a good play. Yeah, this is why I really struggle. So when everybody says like Razork is the best jungler in EU, I really, really struggle to ever believe it because he is making so many plays. He's like most of their plays on the team. And he's supposed to be a veteran. He's supposed to be the shot caller. He's been playing for so long. He just has to be the one that's instigating like most of this bullshit. Like he's playing the engaged champion, he's fucking in there first. He's diving people with Smolder, and it's like, it's got to be you, man. You got to be one of the main problems of this roster. Why you're doing this stuff? You don't have good macro brain. Um, that falls a lot on the jungler, right? Humanoid, obviously, we we've had issues. We've talked about it. He's got the banana combo on Yon down. Uh, but like, <laughs> I, I I really think I I gotta yeah that's true he does. I gotta I gotta blame Razork for a lot of the the bull crap they do and I think that Jun is just a victim I don't think Jun's playing well I think he's missing so many Leona combos um and is really not in the right place at the right time nope. but like it does feel like he's just getting jerked around and going to whatever play the team is just doing he's not doing he's not like proactive he's just running around fighting stuff like it's just solo queue um yeah. gotta, gotta feel like it's the same for noah too like um it just feels like he has no idea what to do he has no voice on the team he just runs around fighting with everybody yeah. i think um, there's something called the carry horizon where yeah. if you are smurfing with your friends if you've ever done this before mm. and you're playing a role that requires some input from your teammates though like let's say you're playing jungle or support and you're not playing a hyper carry um you there is a certain point where you are incentivized to just roam and assist everyone and fight every fire because you yourself cannot carry no matter how good your hands are yeah and i feel like that's what he's stuck in like he is held hostage because his team literally could not do anything and yeah i i don't i still think to this day and like maybe i'm stuck in the narrative mindset but i think to this day this guy is good like this guy's actually a top tier player and he's just stuck on a team with no brains. Now, maybe he's not the smartest either. Maybe he can't shot call in English. Like, I guess sue him for not being good at English and Korean. But, like, it, it's it's really, it's egregious. This team, 
sometimes shows sparks of brilliance, but the, there's no actual intelligence. It's yeah, kind of like a monkey typewriter sort of thing. Now, my problem with their sparks of brilliance, their sparks of brilliance only come in one version, and that is they land a good combo and they fight at a, or get a good skirmish, right? This team is ADHD in that they see an angle, they go for it. Sometimes it's a great angle because they actually play the game a lot, right? But yeah. They only see angles. Everything is an angle to them, right? Everything is an angle. <laughs> they just yeah, they're, everything. They're like, like the conspiracy theorists. They see triangles everywhere. They're like, yeah. damn, man. And then, <laughs> aliens. You know, they, they're, angles. <laughs> they're right enough that it works. That they can get second place, and they have the hands. And because EU is, is a weak that region, they got second. But anyways, EU is just a weak region, right? G two is insanely good, but Fnatic is, you know. Uh, so like, yeah, I think. Um, I, I no I, I I'm sorry I'm not convinced. When I see players like Inspired, like I just cannot believe Razork is actually that good. Even Yankos, right? Yankos is a guy who might have worse hands than Razork, whatever, whatever you want to believe. But Yankos was like always smart on the map, very very intelligent with pathing, very very intelligent with macro, right? Let's not go for this fight because of blah blah blah. He's thinking that in his head. I've heard in comms, I watch him play Champs Q, Solo Q, VODs and stuff. I just I just don't feel like Razork has that. Where it's like, hey, maybe we don't do this because top wave is is pushing into us, and we should just send our side laner back and go take that, and then I will just like cycle my camps and then hold like hover bot and and while my bot lane farms while my my, my smolder scales to two twenty five stacks instead of just fucking running it down. Anyways, let's talk. Let's stop talking uh, about fanatic. One last thing. This is Damn. a low blow, but I had to throw it in. Yeah. Uh, Razark and the EU pop quiz when they started doing that had some of the most like. I have never done anything but play video game answers I've ever heard. So like, <laughs> at the time, I'm like, oh, that's cute. And now I'm yeah. like, hmm. Yes. Was it a sign? <laughs> Was it a sign? Yes. I don't know, you know. Um, anyways, anyways, enough about Fnatic. Actually, not enough. We have to predict the Fnatic Weibo series. What do you, I, I'm just going to go Weibo 2-0, honestly. I don't know. I know Weibo's not even that good, but I just feel like Fnatic Weibo's has... like decent. I think they Weibo have macro. Has... They have, they have real signs macro. of life, and this is a team that literally made World Finals. Yeah, last year. Well, they had the Plus. Shy. Breathe is a significant downgrade, but yes. It is, but he's less of an inter. Like, Breathe, Breathe is not going to get you as far as the Shy, but cons- like when I'm talking about, is there a way Fnatic could take a game? I don't think so. No. I, 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 well, I do think there's a way they could take the game in that you see one of those insanely clean early games, and they don't have to worry about mid to late game macro, because... Um, Weibo has shown they're just going to play ADC comps, and if you fall behind against, like, just Wombo combo, hard early game Vi Ari bullshit from uh, Fnatic, you can just get rolled over. doesn't matter if you have bad macro. So I think it's possible, but I do think it's just going to be 2-0 Weibo, yes. All right, let's move on to TL Gam. Uh, this is the last one we got. Um, we win these, right? Surely we win these. We definitely didn't get eliminated by Gam last year. We definitely did not get smoked 2-0 by Levi last year, right? Um, so we're a better team than last year. Um, yes, we are. We 100%. Don't have summit there. Yeah, um, big deal. That is an advantage, even if we have the corpse of Impact right now. Yep. We team. also have the pending corpse of APA, too. I don't know. Is, is <laughs> the morgue hands. is kind of full of other NA players, so right now we'll see if uh, we can make some space. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot in there. Uh, there's a lot of bodies of Western teams already. Yeah, mostly Mad Lions, 100 Thieves right now, but I think there inevitably a few more will join them. Yep. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I, there's... I still think we have solved a lot of our problems from last year because last year the reason you lose to a team like Gam is because we have no brain. Yes, we have much better brain. We do not still have the hands. Uh, I'm going to be honest about Gam in that I genuinely think they do have the hands and their macro is pretty decent. Their main problem is that they have a very narrow strategy. And this is why they won't be able to beat better teams. And that is Levi has to get fed. If Levi is not getting fed or not getting farmed and not on a pivotal champion... Um, then this team does not function, right? Like, think back to, like, all the GAM games. It's just him popping off on Mukong, um, You literally Shibana, had six kills. They were still funneling him kills after he had gotten most of the early game kills. Yeah. I was like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. They're so literally he... just signaling that they have no other strat, but let Levi carry. 
Yeah. In but, 2024. But to be fair, I think that um, their coordination, the way they play around it, and honestly, their hands are good enough to support the strategy against weaker teams. So that's why they were able to pretty convincingly beat Gam or beat Mad Lions, even though they, they got Giga Stomped game one, right? Which is, you know, happens. But then after that, it was just like, it was just easy mode for Gam. Um, and I, I think that TL, if they don't know how to match this, uh, if they don't play the draft well, if they don't stop Levi, uh, this is a bad matchup for Umti, right? This is like not inspired levels of bad matchup, but it's the next tier lower where he's playing against a very strong uh, carry jungler that has a team that supports him. So I am worried about this matchup. This is not a good, you know, um to Levi is not good. <laughs> we don't like that. Um, impact into Kiaya is supposed to be good, but Kiaya is the next best player on GAM, and Impact is fucking running it down. So I, I'm just going to say I am worried. I am genuinely worried. This I is would also, I'd go as far as to say we'd be better off playing against Fnatic right now. Oh, 100%. Oh, I think we would. Yeah, I think we would be better. Yeah, I think we'd match up Fnatic better. versus Gam in a best of three, we don't really know who's going to win that. Yeah. So I mean, Fnatic did tough, beat Gam, but, but, but yeah. I think yeah. we're agreed, right? That, that, yeah. that We probably would be like, we see Fnatic. Yes, they're not the weakest team left. Yeah. But also we would have done better. I mean, we just style we just stylistically match up into Fnatic better cuz we get the mental edge. The mental edge is more impactful than literally anything just cuz it's Fnatic. <laughs> they have they have no mental. Um, I mean, it means the mental edge will actually just uh, be infinite gap. <laughs> yeah, true. And also Fnatic cannot play mid to late game. Gam can actually play mid to late game as long as their jungler is fed. In fact, Gam's mid to late game is just pretty solid for a for a, especially for a wildcard team uh yeah. so if you have one strategy you've trained for literally years right i think it's, their whole it's really straightforward to it's a really straightforward path to success right because you only need to think about one way forward it's just like when Whipple got all those shields and heals they had one path forward which is <laughs> Whipple go Whipple does whatever and yeah. we enable it it's yeah. really simple actually <laughs> It is very simple, um, and it's also why like PSG is always going to struggle against a team like FlyQuest, is because even though uh, I don't know, it felt like PSG had better hands than FlyQuest, uh, they just don't have macro. I actually think you know Gam versus PSG. I don't know who wins, but Gam has better macro than PSG. Let's be honest. Um, so yeah, um, I'm still going to predict TL. I do think it's going to go to three games. I do think it's going to be two one. I think it's gonna be two one TL, but I don't think I don't think we're gonna walk away feeling happy about it. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna go away feeling happy about it either. Um, yeah, but I think it's gonna be a two one. I don't think the current TL can do a clean two zero, even though they are a better team by a lot than Gam. Because like they should be, yes. Um, yeah. but I will say one caveat: if they end on a good game three, I think it means our game f- our. 2 2 match, TL's favor against almost anyone not named T1 or whoever the hell shows or, up to that or match. Or BLG or whatever. Yeah. yeah there's, whoever there's shows a... up to that match yeah, that yeah. isn't like a, a top Korean or Chinese threat, Liquid is favored. Yeah. Uh, or or G2. I do not think we're favored against G2. Okay. Uh, if they end up okay. In there. Actually, yeah, yeah. there aren't that many matches we're favored, but we will look better. <laughs> we'll, our, our odds go up a lot. Okay. I, I'm, yes. I'm bargaining. <laughs> yes. Yes. Good bargaining. Good bargaining. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a good chance we we uh, we get Fnatic or PSG in there or uh, whatever. So, um, yeah, we can do it. Actually, no, wait. PSG is playing an elimination match against BLG. Wait, isn't that insane? That is insane to think about. That BLG, BLG and PSG. Oh my god, is there... not an elimination match? You do have to keep in mind BLG, even in domestic, do lose game one a lot. They're just like That's game true. one merchants, and unfortunately, when you have a bunch of best of ones to get to this point. <laughs> Oh my god, man. I cannot believe BLG is just going to be in the 2-2 spot, like if they beat PSG, or they're out. I can't believe we might be playing BLG. <laughs> if we're to get out. I mean, if they actually, beat PSG. You know, they're supposed to PSG. It's a game, best of ones are... It's or, best no, of three. No, best, of, best of threes are still scary. Yeah, I'll, I'll, this actually happened at BLG last year. They were also 2-2, and then they had to beat G2 just barely to make it to quarterfinals. Yeah, and it wasn't convincing. 
No, it was not. And then they barely beat Genji, and then they had a five game banger against Weibo. What a weird world last year. What a weird world last year, indeed. Yeah, that was weird. This is BLG with your goat. <laughs> yeah, your goat. Oh my god. And Jun, right? Yeah. Now they have Wei. I have actually not been impressed with Wei. Wei has actually been pretty mid. He was insane uh, domestically. He was insane in RNG Wait, back in the day. Yeah, this, yep. guy's, this guy. I have not been impressed with he was, Yeah, I think domestically he showed why they put him in over Shun, but. I, yeah. I think if they get to game f- like two two or game three of yeah. the two one two, they might just sub a moon. They might be like, we need wild. This guy is so much better against international players than I don't even know why. Way is not a bad international player. It's actually no. so confusing. Yeah. He's just very muted. He's just like not very. Um, I don't know. Yeah, he's really he- muted this tournament. Yeah, this tournament. I think yeah. this guy is one of the best junglers internationally. Of all time, actually. Probably, not, I mean... Not top three, but, like, top five. His record, his consistency. Yeah. He came in as a, as a rookie and beat Cannon. I'll, I'll put him in top ten somewhere. Top ten. I have to think about it more. Top, think about it more. But, uh, okay. Anyways, we got TL versus Gam. We're, we're getting 2 one Or, we're, we're 2 one them. Sorry. Uh, let's take that back. Uh, <laughs> we're getting 2 one No, no, no. And no, Mitchell no. reveals his betting line. <laughs> yeah, I was like, against TL. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would bet against TL if it made them win. Like, goddamn, bro. Like, um, yeah. You paid, I'm, your, you paid your due. Yeah, I'm invested. I'm invested in this world, man. I've actually been waking up every day to watch it. I haven't, I, I've watched I every game live. Worlds. It's always yeah. my favorite time of year, and it's always around my birthday, which is next Friday, it's Saturday. Oh, really? Oh, my God. My yeah, birthday is the week after that. You're the yep. 12th? <laughs> we have this conversation once a year. <laughs> oh, okay, nice. Yeah. My birthday is 29th, so I'm two weeks after. Actually, so two weeks, but... Yeah. We Same month. Our, we have our October birthday conversation. It's the best month. It's the best month to have a birthday. Um, all right. Let's, any last things we want to talk about? Oh, my not God. From, not from I, your end. <laughs> I just, I just uh, yawned. <laughs> I think that's... We covered it all. We covered all the worlds. I mean, this. Yes, she could still compete. Yeah, no, we did it. We did it. I mean, um, Elioya had a pretty spicy interview. He was basically mad coping, saying that like he figured out some magic way that Eastern players play, and that they're adjusting, and that the fact they're adjusting was why they lost to Gam or something, and that if they just played at their normal the level, they would have beaten Eastern Gam. Eastern players play, but because he was adjusting against Gam, they lost against Gam, but they'll beat an Eastern team now that they've adjusted. They found the magic sauce, yeah, he figured it out. I don't know. It was a really dumb interview. I... Did yeah. Yoya said this? Oy- yes, Yoya Al-Yoya said this. Yoya's out. Yeah, he said this in the post-game interview after Mad Lions lost to oh, Gam. I don't, dude, I don't watch limited. any Mad Lions, Con. Oh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't watch it. Oh, I did watch the series this morning. I watched... Uh... I didn't oh, yeah, even watch, yeah. so get the I first like game. Content, but I do watch their matches because it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, but then um, it was just a Reddit post. It was just trending. Um, and then, like, Cage talked about it and, like, translated the interview. And then I was just like, Cage this guy's mega hard coping. Um, yeah. So, oh, very interesting. The Pedro thing was a meme. I didn't know he actually spoke Spanish. I don't watch a lot of his stream. Oh, yeah. No, he's from Spain. Yeah. Um, yeah. Spawn had a very interesting interview as well. He basically, you know, did, you know, kind of talk about most of what we were saying. Um, the interview was very, um, Spawn's just a great guy. Very in-depth interview. You know, he's, he's media trained, as court, of course, as well. Um, and had some interesting insight on how he thinks about the game. A lot about matchups, right? He called Impact and Umti the neutralizers. So he talked about their matchup into into Gam, where Kiaya and Levi are their carries, right? So a bit of a mismatch there. How you handle that is, you know, different from team to team. So Spawn is great. Um, I think that's all the interviews. Yeah, we, you know, we get to. Oh, I know. We'll end on this, okay? We get to, we get the last laugh. All right, you ready for this? EU production, baby. What a meme it has been this tournament. Um. It hasn't been like the worst thing. There have been worse. There's no been interruptions in broadcast, but I gotta say the lack of replays has been pretty fucking terrible. Um, we do not get replays for so many of the fights, and it has bothered me. 
Um, also, a lot of players are misnamed. So they called Scout Yagao <laughs> in this first game. That is so funny to me. It's, it's so all funny. The, all the drama that's led up to this point is just, it's pure cinema. It's so funny. They called him It was like Yagao. game one, too. Yeah, so like, game... I, I just saw that. I'm like, you're kidding, right? It's <laughs> so fucking troll. And then they changed it mid game. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, for top esports, they had TN, right? And his name was Tit Titan. They put Titan in there instead, and they didn't change it all game. That one stayed. <laughs> um, they actually just have the intern doing like overtime here. They didn't make yeah. no sense how, like, some mistakes you can kind of see. You're like, oh, I, I see what happened there. I mean, Titan, TN, maybe the person has trouble reading. All I don't game? know. It's all just game? funny. It's just funny. Need to do this? Yeah, it's funny. No replays, big bummer. And then finally, the cherry on top, the creme de la brule. I don't know what it is. Creme de la creme. Creme de la creme. Okay, that's stupid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the draw. They didn't have the uh, oh my the God, thing I the ball. I forgot because it was. <laughs> <laughs> the lady who's doing the draw, she opens it. You can't hear her because she doesn't have a mic set up, and she's just like, "Yeah, there's nothing in the ball." It's fucking like she, I swear I heard. I thought she cursed her or something. She was like, "This is I fucking stupid." Cursed, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "What the fuck? There's nothing in here." <laughs> and then so they just move on. So um, for the first draw, there was no ticket for LNG, but it's fine because LNG no, it's got draw last. Because Worlds is actually. Worlds is um, rigged, dude. That's yeah, it's scripted. It it's scripted. The matchups are predetermined. They, like, they were like, they're supposed to replace the ball, and then they forgot. Yep, yep. Um, so that's why G two T one always happens because they, you know, they got to sell Honestly, the merch. Honestly, at this point though, if that is what happened, like if they actually scripted it just to make more I'm like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, I give a shit, but I mean, because like the integrity of the game, but I don't give a shit because G two T one's hilariously fun to watch. And I that's true. I love. Okay, they get they're they're nice to us, but they're still bad. It's like a. It's like a bad parent giving you candy. You still love them because they're giving you candy, but like you shouldn't, you know. Isn't it uh, like Amazon treating their customers well, even though their warehouse workers are just getting? Yeah, something like that. Um. Anyways, um, yeah, they forgot to put the ball, and then they had to redo the entire second draw. Hilarious, uh, because there was just no balls or no like, no names of balls. This is worlds. Like, yeah, this is the worlds. It's in the worlds, LEC and studio. We're having record viewership. <laughs> And yeah. we're also having, like, not record, but just extra bad. Yeah. Say, it's it's pretty bad production. Uh, I mean, there's been no interruptions in the broadcast. That is probably the worst one, and that has happened in another place. I think that happened in NA, um, in plans uh, in 2022. But whatever. Whatever you get your shit together. Give me more replays. Put the things in the balls. <laughs> Stop fucking around. Uh, <laughs> and uh, otherwise, it's been a great world. The games have been absolutely top tier, fantastic. Um, yep. Like there have been very little stomps, almost no stomps. Right, the only stomps were like, you know, the ones I didn't care about. It was like Mad Lions got stomped, right? Um, so the expected ones. The expected ones, right? Um, so absolutely banger. I the one thing I will say is that. At least the West is showing, even if they're losing, they are showing up and making the games fun to watch. It is the worst when we watch the West versus East and the game is just boring and we just have to watch through it and suffer. So there is at least that. It is very entertaining. Um, so good stuff, good stuff. All right, let's close it out. We are at two hours for this podcast. I got to go to bed. the longest one we've done as a duo. This has got to be. Yeah, this is crazy long. Uh, there's just so much to talk about, too. So... Um, Let's call it. Let's call it. I'm done. We're done. Okay. We're done. We're done. Anything else? Uh, no. You're done. Uh, I I'm don't done. think there's anything else to call. Uh, I, something may come to my next podcast, and I will make up for it. But that's about it. I mean, I, I could go on and on about the meta too. You know me. I could go on and on, but uh, mm. let's just leave it. Okay. Let's just leave it. Um. You know what? Okay, I will not leave it. I am surprised that there's not more J4. Kind of sad. One of my favorite champions. Wish there was more J4, but that's okay, though. He is very strong on this patch. Um, get that passive buff, but everybody's just playing Sejuani in Nocturne. Super lame. Um, okay, that's all I wanted to say. 
cool. Got that out there. All right. Try not to be too toxic, and we'll see you on the next episode. Peace.